hello, hello, everybody. Yeah, welcome to workshop four. Hello, guys. Hello, guys. Well, we are still waiting for more viewers to come in. You guys can come and talk to me, or talk to the admins, or even talk to Sana. So, okay. So, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of EXP Plus Workshop presented by Skip. I'm KZP and together with Hello, me Sana. is Sono, Sono for the second Sono. time <laughs> and we will be your coaches for today so before we start remember that there will be a giveaway guys so the gift will be going on live so please go on and like and share and tag your friends and you will stand a chance to win the elite elite ah huh? elite skin which costs about 549 diamonds I think so. We will pick the winners at the end of the show. So if you guys are also still interested in the mentoring session, right? We have now uh, left the sign-ups open until 8 p.m. So even though now you think, ah, the sign-up, should I, should I go and sign up? Just to let you all know that one hour won't be wasted. So go and sign up and also, you know, give more Q&A's to us so we can answer to all of your doubts when you guys are playing Mobile Legends. So yeah, so after this session, right, uh, we'll be going into a Discord where you all will get a chance, a good chance, yeah, to play with Sana. Uh, I will be the observer. I will try to uh, point out the mistakes and all the good gameplays that you guys made. Uh, so it's a very expensive life tips huh? just to let you all know and it's all presented by skip esports yeah so feel free to sign up at the link in the twitch chat also yeah the the me, then it's in, yeah. uh i mean <laughs> this time round i'll be there to give your tips so even though they play with you until you're sick of it right but they hardly have good tips from me and who's the one that go into hold the trophy yeah, no choice, ah. Yeah. Huh? yeah, no choice. So please pay attention, ah. Huh? So you all can go and you know apply the mentoring ship. Then I think there will be a email sent to your mailbox. So if you didn't receive, go and check in the spam folder as well. Uh, the instructions will be sent at eight pm sharp, most likely. So, uh, later on when I am talking about how the all the slides, right? Uh, Sana will be there to uh, uh look at all the all of your comments, yeah. So when y'all got any uh, question or y'all confused like eh, hey, KZP English, uh, I don't understand eh Then you try to ask more in, in further Then Sana will repeat or like uh, give pass it to me So uh, either me or Sana will help to elaborate all the you know good answers so that y'all can understand If y'all don't understand right, I will explain until you understand Or Sana will explain until you understand Then y'all get better Go into Mythic Glory, win the MPL qualifier this coming weekend. See? Easy, right? Then when the registration like close already. Eh? No, no, no. It's, it's, it's not close. It's, it's until uh, it's until uh seven fifty five or eight. The eight, 8 p.m. you will close. So you all still got chance to go and register now. I say MPL qualifier oh, la. That one, that one they already join already. All all the oh. viewers they join already. If they don't join the MPL qualifier. Sure, got a lot of other competitions out there, right? That y'all will benefit from this. So why not just register? Ah, uh, y'all can get skins, y'all can get diamonds. Eh, I cannot get. Sana cannot get. If y'all don't want, then maybe the admin will give me. So maybe y'all can hashtag KZP diamonds. Okay, then uh KZP will receive three elite skins and I don't know maybe two thousand diamonds from Skip. Yeah, so, uh. Before the end of the show, right, there, there has been a Facebook post that asks you guys to share and tag your friends, right? So that one, you all please help us to share and tag your friends. Then you all will have chance to get the uh, diamonds or skins. Then from there, Skip will contact you to get your ML details. And when I was streaming, right, I realized that some of you did not receive your stuff or Skip have not contacted you. So please, uh, if you're one of the winners, uh, maybe the last few sessions, right, Go and comment so that the admins uh, can see that you guys are the ones that uh, they left out or something. La. Or maybe they did contact you but you didn't reply. So in the meantime, please let's we shall move on, yeah. Cause 
I don't want to talk so much later you all say what uh, I talkative then become Korea version 2 uh. by the way guys please don't ask me to show hair already please you're supposed to come here and learn something not to see hair yeah yeah, the hair yeah. like that, right? The hair like that, right? Uh, yeah, I, I purposely put the cam on top, but he zoomed me until you cover everything. So, yeah. no choice, no choice. Thanks, KCP. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to crop for him to make sure the hair not so bright was all this also already. Okay, anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Uh. So, uh, today we'll be talking about Rose again. Uh, last week we talked about Rose, right? Last week in Rose 3, when I was with Jason, we talked about uh, Tang, we talk about Mitch, and we talk about ah y'all off y'all all got remember ah faster remember last one ah yeah never mind y'all all don't remember correct or not I talk about assassin ah so this week I will be talking about support fighter and as well as uh marksman so uh those that are very good at it and and you think my theory is strong, right? Why wow, you spam the comment box, la, eh? Yeah. Or maybe if you are good enough, you can trial for resurgence. Uh, please contact Skip Esports admin and then tell them you are good enough. Uh, you want to be part of resurgence. Uh, let them know. Yeah. So we shall move on, yeah. Yeah. So let me introduce myself again. So for those that do not know me, right? I'm KZP. My real life name is Eugene Kong, but nobody calls me that, even my real life friends. La. Because KZP is too unique until they also call me KZP. So I'm a professional Mobile Legends player. I'm also the team captain for Resurgence. And, you know, uh, Captain, Tang, Shred Scholar, Drafter, everything. La. So I, I do everything, but, uh, you know, credits is all split evenly. Because if they don't listen properly, I also won't get. Uh, even the champion, right? So as long as they do their part, I'm happy about it. So this time round, right? Uh, we shall we shall see if let's say MPL uh season six or my tail, right? If we can do good, uh, we will try our best as usual. I will repeat this uh, for the next six sessions uh, or until MPL season six ends uh, I will keep repeating. Wow. hope that we can do better. This sort of thing. Yeah, so y'all can, you know, cheer us up. And also please support us, yeah. Because uh Resurgence is one of the only part time teams in uh uh MPL. So we managed to win also maybe because we are lucky or we spend the time in a very efficient way, this kind of thing. So also because we are part time team, that's why we are here to teach you why a part time team right can win trophies. Fair enough. Huh? You see all the MY teams? Or all, all got book camp, all got house to play. And up leh? Ah, they some cannot even get fifth, fifth place. <coughs> okay, never mind. Okay, yeah. So, so since we are here, we share with you. All, we are we are having the champion tips for you, all, or even the first runner up for MPLI. So, try to listen lah. If you all don't understand, then you all can ask me questions as usual. I'm willing to teach you all further. So y'all can get better and hopefully by then when I retire uh, then y'all come take over me. Okay? Don't don't learn already then y'all still, you know, y'all go play the MPL qualifier, y'all win already, then y'all can beat us. Don't uh, don't uh. thank you. Uh. Okay anyway, uh, I don't want to talk so much about myself later I become Korea version 2.1. So let's move on to Sana. Okay, I think y'all should know who I am. I'm Sana, I'm from I'm playing the fighter role for Resurgence and I've been in ML for I think 2-3 years already and as you all might know and you please la, stop asking me my name come from where la. it come from twice la, okay? just laugh at me, just judge me whatever la. I don't care la. so I, li- I like this I like this girl twice la, okay? this Japanese girl called Sana that's why my name is Sana okay? so I really hope my my experience in this uh, I played I play around four seasons of MPL already, so I really hope my experience in all these uh, MPL seasons can can bring this out to help y'all. Lah. So y'all can um, carry on our legacy further and you know go to like MPL season 10, I don't know. Because I think professional players have a really short lifetime. But is it called lifetime? Lifespan. Lifespan, sorry. Have a very short lifespan. Lah. So we always need the young, young blood to take over us next time. 
So I really hope you all learned something today. And although I'm very, very tired from work already, but I'm still here for you guys. So, okay, let's, let's carry on. So, <coughs> uh, just a uh, gentle reminder, he's still single. So anyone wants any his number, please pay me also. Wow, please la. Yeah. So see, he I, even pleased me to I, give you all his number. I'm buying my BTO at 20 years, 28 years old already. Don't need to ask really. Yeah. So anyway, uh, let me read one comment, uh, just one comment from you, okay? So, uh, my question is somewhere, let me see, hey, uh, be back-to-back -back champions. Okay, for this question or this answer, right, we will try our best. If let's say um, we can, then I think Resurgence will do something for you all again. Lah. Yeah, because of this COVID situation, uh, you all, uh, please stay at home. Uh, be healthy watch resurgent streams only yeah so Coach. you see like solos korea don't wait watch uh, watch kcp sana uh, twitch from saying this kind and sometimes skips is skips right got streams uh, regarding other things like some media corp uh, people come and uh, stream you go and watch uh, go and have fun with us then you all can get free diamonds free skins then if you want you also can do the hashtag thing hashtag uh Jason in or something I still remember yeah please do that uh. yeah all your supports make us feel very proud okay okay move on yeah talk too much about us right now we need to talk more about the theory I'll try to make it as interesting as possible uh, because all these uh, workshops right is very dry I know when I'm talking I think half of you are there yawning your mouth big big uh. I saw you already I think I don't know I think it's Kaleo Wow, open yawning the mouth. Mabel also right there. Okay. Uh try try to make it as in interesting as possible. Uh. Yeah. But actually maybe the admin itself all yawning. Uh. So yeah, anyway, okay, our learning objective for this rose part two, right? So we'll be talking about support first. Uh talking about how support works and what are the objective of support, supports attributes, uh how how many types of supports are there, this kind of thing, blah 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 blah. Okay. So in some scenarios I will I will put out and then uh, let you all know what are the perfect scenarios for uh, the different types of supports uh, are good at in, the, in it. Lah. So if you all miss out or something, you all can just ask again and then I will try to answer it. Lah. Then the second part will be the marksman. The uh, marksman, right, actually, uh, just a disclaimer. Uh, I wanted to ask LY4 uh, to make a video of his marksman, right, to show how good his marks marksman is. I asked him since one uh, 10 days ago. Uh, he said, okay, okay, no problem. End up leh, I also go and dig, dig some resource about Marksman. Until now, he never even sent me. Uh, so the next time he stream might, please help me uh, score him a bit. Uh, give him the F word, K word, uh, the A word, all the work come out. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so then we talk about the fighter. Uh, now you know why Sana is here. Because fighter, right, is a very complex role. At this point of time, right, the fighter role actually there is also some majors that you can put in, some tank you can put in, uh, some support like Camellia you can put in. So in different scenarios, different fighters is very very good at it. And I would say this meta, uh, as of twenty second of July, right, fighter should be the hardest to play, and then followed by I think assassin slash marksman because they hold the same role, and individuals cannot really train to that role in both ways la. they can only train in one road most most characters la. yeah so like you know ly ly do you know ly from resurgence yeah he you know he only can play what role ah yeah when he play assassin i see a lot of you over there giggling giggling uh then when you giggle you all help me put hashtag ly4 out then he <laughs> ego <laughs> burn right when he ego burn right you know what what he will train more so you all helping resurgence Wow, see? Win-win scenario. Okay, so let's move on. Ah. <coughs> yeah, okay. So firstly, we'll be talking about supports. So I saw some of the chat. Someone asking me to go toilet. Please go. Lah, but you're holding the phone so you all can hold the phone and walk to the toilet and hear me talk. Because most of the thing, what I do is I talk. Unless I got video, I ask you all, hey, you all sit down, look at your phone. Then you all will on, then you all sit down, you all look at your phone. Okay, so for now, as supports, right? What are the learning objective for today will be the supports attributes. So, uh, is it squishy, tanky, or whatever? 
Then what should be the objective as a support? The usage of support buff on different occasion. Uh, support buff meaning like you know Rafaela got the heal right, which sometimes which gives you the movement speed increase. Those are considered buff. Those are the meaning of buff. Then there is also debuff. Debuff is something like digis out, which gives you you know like a purify skills and you get some shield also. So these are things that I'll be explaining as well. And uh. Supports is similar to tank, but uh, there will be questions that ask, am I too paper to soak damage? This one I can teach you all because this one, uh, when I'm playing support, right, I, I still have the tank mentality for the support. So I can soak a uh, decent amount of damage and, uh, and go in, come out and hide behind my hypercore. So this is one of the things that I want to say. Yeah, so uh, do feel free to share this stream. Like subscribe this channel or whatever uh, so that more people come in and learn together okay and also what should i use the different type of support and overall what are my different primary roles and different types of support so in support right uh later on i'll be saying that there is tank support mage support 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 so the support support is meaning the itself there's only one category so they are really really a support while a uh, support tank uh, can maybe soak a bit of damage or soak more damage compared to like mage support and main support support and also the mage support uh, usually have higher damage compared to tank support and also the support main role so for this role right in season 3 or season 2 uh, uh, Sana was one is you know good at it uh, or something like see him play Angela in MSC what I tell you well, uh, we don't why you need to bring bring us back to MSG? Uh, this is just to you know so that I'm you get the idea of support and ground. teach your students. Wow. I'm going myself in the ground already. Okay, so he was a support player at some point of time, so they get last place. So even though it's a last place, <laughs> but it's still MSC. Wow. Yeah, so he got a little bit of tips for you guys. I will also have because in other games, uh, my main role is actually sort of this support role lah. So I'm quite good at support. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, Sana, you got anything you want to add on? Uh, I'm sorry, I can't provide so much information on the support roles ah. Uh, Cause even when I play the Angela. Uh, is at the side lane lah. So maybe if you ask me about the side lane Angela, then I can maybe answer you a bit better lah. But I think for the most part of support, I I think KSB will be doing the talking lah. Okay. So okay. If you all have any questions, you all just just ask lah. We'll stop and answer. So yeah. So uh, then like that, Sana will look at the comments more lah. So if you want to hear Sana voice, right? Please spam the comments and ask decent questions ah. Don't go and ask why why Jason not here, why LF4 not here, why Singh not here. Uh, don't ask uh, whether we know BGAs. Uh, don't ask whether he why uh, show his hair color. Ask <laughs> reasonable questions. Okay? So anyway, let's move on to the support, support, support uh, theory. Okay? So let's move on. Okay, so for this support attributes, right? Uh, in we talk about general supports, uh, we don't just talk about tank support, mage support, and those support support. So when you all hear so much support, uh, I hope you all don't over there like giggling, giggling. So first thing is, support attributes are semi-squishy. So they are usually not very squishy like all the FASA things like that. Even though you are Rafaela, you are Estes, right? You are usually not very squishy. Maybe I think the squishiest support I think should be Diggy. But also again, Diggy, if you build properly, it, it can go into semi squishy uh, attributes as well. So it depends on how you build your item in the late game phase. But we are talking everything about in the early game. Uh, they are usually all semi squishy except maybe Diggy. But Diggy has higher damage compared to others. So we talk about that later on. So it also have good debuff skills. What do I mean by debuff? Like I said just now, right? Uh, buff is skills like Rafaela speed boost, Diggy's ultimate. Ah, uh, things like that. So CCs are also considered. Even though you know, you remember Minotaur, ah, uh, one of uh, uh, one of uh, OP hero in season two, season three. Then now become like uh, nobody use in the rank games anymore. And I recently used and I get a bronze. I am proud of it. Okay, so in like you know Minotaur, the debuff is the uh healing the healing raw 
and then your ultimate can slam five people this kind of thing so so they are all very good debuff skills so if, if there is a support that doesn't have a good debuff skills right then no point using the support anymore lah because uh, that's not considered a support that's more like a tank or like a pure magic damage dealer already so uh, thirdly for these support attributes they also requires teams to follow what I mean by that is let's say uh, let's say I'm using a Rafaela okay like the picture below wow, Chobu uh, pretty girl if I'm using a Rafaela right most of the time I won't roam alone why because you roam alone right once you can you manage to roam uh, you can't get kills number one number two once you get ganked by the enemy team or someone scout out, let's say give you one any example, Valia. Valia scouted your Rafaela. Valia uh just throw his fireball at you. You when you roam, you reach your objective base, right? You have HP. No point you roam alone, correct? Number I don't talk about uh Valia la. Uh talk about one Kufra. Kufra jump you. Wow, you also cannot survive half like you are maybe include your heal, uh, I think you have HP best at best only so things like that right is really you know not not ideal to room alone unless you are a lolita or a minotaur tank support but if you are in the mid support category or the support support category uh require a uh, 90 percent uh don't don't room alone follow your hyper or follow your tank behind and from there you can do decent good amount of uh, debuff skills, good buff skills, or decent small little damage pokes that you can uh make your objective do faster later on. Yeah, so uh, all the clear wave skills for all these supports, right? I think, think, think. Ah, uh, when I look at the, I look at the support tab, right? I realize there's one pretty decent uh, compared to the others, and that is Firamis. Okay. But Framish is under the category of mid support. So Framish actually clear wave very fast. But this one in general, if we talk about we add all the support, right? And then we divide by the amount of supports, right? All the clear wave is pretty bad. Lah. It is uh, maybe we talk about Diggy, Diggy clear wave okay, but you won't want to use the bomb to go and clear wave, right? Then we talk about Rafaela, we talk about Estes. Well, this clear wave is also so only. It's not very bad, but it's not the best you can find it out there lah. so things like that uh, it's not very good and I really hope that uh, if you guys are playing Diggy you all don't go and use the Diggy Bomb to go and clear away because it's not ideal and there are better objectives out there which I'll talk later on so that you guys can use the Diggy to go up to the Mythic Glory okay so uh, damage in the early game is very low so damage low in early game but pretty decent in the late game so apart from Diggy, apart from Farmis, I take out these two. What other supports are there? Rafaela, uh, Estes, Lolita, Minotaur, Nana. All these are very low in the early game. But once you reach to the late game, right, it is pretty decent for all these majors to actually help to carry the game by maybe 30%. Compared to like your hyper carries or your side lanes. Lah. Yeah, because all these, uh, you buy skilling item like, let's say I'm a Nana, I buy... Uh, like Link Truncheon, I buy uh, Cloud of Destiny, I buy all the magic damage item. In the late game, right, uh, my one boomerang with my one ultimate, uh, they are going to cry and then tell my mom that he, they are not going to play Mobile Legends anymore and they are going to study for their PSLE. So these are things that is pretty good in the late game. So even though uh, early game, you all can have some deaths, but in the late game, try not to have uh, deaths because actually your clear wave mechanics is very good. Like I said, it's mythical, but once you reach late game, your damage is high. Therefore, your clear wave is fast. So late game, don't die. Early game, you don't die. It's okay, but don't die so much. Yeah, don't be like Aeon who dies 12 times in my scream games last time. Uh, things like that. So like you play Nana, you hold the boomerang, you keep clearing wave. It's a good... Uh, defense source of item uh, skill set so things like that is very good and okay so the last one I will say is the skills usually needs timing to press why like what okay Diggy ultimate okay Lolita, Lolita ultimate Minotaur ultimate Framis ultimate uh what Camellia ultimate you think 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 all this you still need timing to press other other heroes like what Johnson uh, uh, all the landslot, all this, the skills, the ulti, don't need press, don't don't need timing to press one, 
you see people you you want to press you press all this uh all this uh what that uh dicky all this all really need the good timing to press to utilize perfectly for all these skills okay so later on i will also brief it up a bit lah yeah so if if i forget to say please remind me ah sana mm. yeah so i will pass to you for one question okay let's see uh just now i saw a question uh, is kaja still viable dispatch actually kaja dispatch uh, is really quite weak because eh? due to the <coughs> fact that the ot got nerf uh, then you need to get very very near uh, to uh actually less actually grab the person uh. so you'll be very very reliant on your flicker instead so this so if you wanna put Kaja as a tank support, uh, I really suggest other heroes uh, Because you every time you don't have flicker, uh, you're not gonna get anybody unless they rush at your face. So if you're gonna Kaja used to be a hero where you can pick every game no matter what com- combination they have. But now it's not really good. Uh. If you if you want to play the damage role, however, it is a lot better. Like the side lane, uh, the side lane, uh. not the support mage. Uh. The support mage, um, I, don't, I don't think you should, I don't think you should try it. Uh. So if you play as a side lane, you can go your full damage, your burst. So at least, because the circle, I think it's a buff for more magic magic damage you now. So I think it's quite worth to play as a, as a side lane damage instead. Uh. So let's see. Uh. So for, let me uh, carry on with from Sana point of view. So I feel as a Kaja this meta as of 22nd of July, Kaja is not really a support hero like the mid ones, more of like the at most you can use at the side lane. And these heroes for the mechanics, I think you need to get better than usual because of the ultimate uh, nerf like uh, the range right. So it becomes sort of like a bad rider, really like a bad rider. But your blink dagger is cool down at 120 seconds. Instead of how many, how how much is the CD in D two? I can't remember, but it's way shorter than hundred twenty seconds. And for uh Kaja to use his flickers to only triggers and catch people, right? Uh, there is better heroes out there. I feel, and heroes like let's say Sylvana, I feel it can reach to a better meta this this time round. It's just waiting for some pro players to use. And it's, it can be a better Kaja but requires slightly more skill mechanics. But if you want to train Kaja until uh, lev- very high, or your Kaja now is a very high level already, right? I think you still can play if you are very confident in your flicker LT or the way your mi- macro and your micros on your Kaja. That's how I feel. So, yeah. I think this Kaja. The reason why he's still sort of viable uh, is because his LT cannot be purified. If he's like last time uh, can be purified, uh, no one no one's gonna pick him really. Yeah, so Yeah. No choice. It's okay. Yeah, yeah Kaja is well, not so really uh Uh now this this meta Kaja can't really poke people compared to the last meta. At least when mm. I try it and I feel it. So this is one tip for you all, don't don't use it as a support. Use it as a side lane. Shall we answer one more? Sure, yeah. sure, sure. If you can find one good question, we'll go for one more. In the meantime, I shall move my slides. Good question. Uh, Kids B, serious question. When do we decide to complete the mask and when to sell, off, sell the mask off to get main items? Okay. This, is for this one is for supports. But actually, there's a top workshop regarding scenario item build. But I shall answer because this guy every session ask me this question or someone should ask me this question so i shall answer today uh, so regarding this right i feel because of uh the tanks in the mobile legends are not very very tanky like other games so in my opinion right unless you are someone that do not know what to buy to utilize fully for your item such as i give you one example if let's say your opponent is a mage comp, definitely you buy Athena shoe right but at this time, after Athena, you don't know what to buy. You don't know whether if going Oracle suits or going Curse Helm or should I buy a, a Demon Event, things like that, or Queen's Wings. So, I think you can buy your 
uh, whatever mask you want, courage mask, uh, all mask, stealth mask. But the thing is, you need to know how to use the mouse in the first place. Because as much as the courage mask gives you movement speed, how sure are you you are using it at the best you can do? So that one you must try. Uh, at the same time, right, when buying all these masks, your tank attributes will actually go down a bit. Your support attributes go down, goes down a bit. Depending on uh, what type of category you want as a support, right? It actually went down a bit, but your HP, there's more a bit. Your CDR, there's more a bit. And you got a more, one more skill to press. For example, there is a Natalia in the opponent's side. Do you know that a Courage Mask can actually trigger the Natalia when you see the exclamation mark? Yeah. So that is a thing that... Uh, Sometimes I buy to, you know, utilize so that the Natalia can expose. But I don't buy every game or I don't buy at which timing. I see if, let's say, I can tank well enough or I can't tank, then I think I will need more tank items, right? So I won't go for the Courage Mask or things like that. Unless I think that the Courage Mask, the Stun Mask, the Conceal Mask, right, is very useful for the team. So I have to weigh the pros and cons at the same time. So let's say this is the courage mask. This is let's say uh immortality. Which one are more benefits to the team? By me surviving longer, is it more? Or by me pressing to give my team movement speed, some damage reduction or damage, is it more? So this kind of thing you have to see depends on different different uh gameplay. Uh the if the team don't engage much, like to split push. I prefer if you go for immortality la, things like that. If your team team fights a lot and you see, you tap in and you see you got zero death, your team got five death each. So I, I prefer you go for the courage mask because the opponent didn't aim you. The opponent aim uh your core, so your core got that five death. And in order to boost your core a little bit, you buy the courage mask. You buy the stealth mask. So all this can help boost the uh your teammate and since you won't die right, you got zero death. Then so be it lah. By then, if you die, doesn't matter. Yeah, just go your team. The F word, the A word, the K word. Yeah, so then tell them to wake up their idea and play properly. Then you will win the game. Yeah, that's my opinion. Okay. Yeah, I saw we, we are just, just, just one last tip. Uh. I saw somebody say the save my teammates from crow and link when they low health using stealth mask. Yeah, actually, that's uh, that's so one of the things you can take note uh, for like some heroes uh, they need they they have some skill targeting uh, so you can prevent the skill targeting from using stealth mask. So basically, if you use stealth mask, right, then uh, let's say you are fighting against a uh, wait, what's the hero with skill? Uh, maybe let's say Cho uh, Cho ulti. So if you press the stealth mask uh, and he you know, he press ulti uh, he cannot ulti anybody because he cannot cannot target you lah in a way. So for those targeting heroes uh, you have the choice to buy stealth mask lah. Yeah. Carry mm. on, carry on. Okay, so we shall move on uh. Later then, then you all ask question, then I read, then I answer, okay? So for this slides, we'll be talking about the support tank. So what should be the support as a support tank? So there are only two support tank, or I think there's three, but uh, Camellia is under just support support category and not really tank support. So for the objective of a support tank like Mino Lolita, right, is number one, get your level 4 fast. So before level 4, you are just a uh, useless observer ward. So when you're doing that, get vision. Don't attempt fights and you must always stand in front of your calls. So what do I do after I get my level 4? Of course, you have to utilize your ulti ultimate. Because your ultimate is the only reason why you pick this hero. Lolita, the ulti is a very good slam. And the Mino ulti has 5 slams. So they are all slamming heroes. Okay? But uh, comparing Lolita and Mino, I would recommend you to play the Lolita if you want to play the support tank. Because Lolita in level 1 to 3, at least you got one stun and one shield. Which the shield in different scenarios is beneficial to the team. So therefore, you need to buy, uh, play Lolita compared to Mino is better lah, in my opinion. And my Mino quite bad. I always get bronze with it. So I really prefer Lolita. Okay, so in 1 to 3, right, your objective is, uh, let's say a Lolita. You can actually follow the mage or help the hyper carry do buff. So, but, but doing that, right, you don't stay all the way when he's doing buff. So let's say me and Sana, uh, Sana is playing the hyper carry like a carry or a Granger, right? So we clear me, right, we want to take a red buff. So I go to a red buff, 
what I did is what I will do is I will use my stun, hit the buff, hit until half. Then once he reach half, right, I will leave him alone and let him do the buff itself. Then I will walk to find a bush in the mid lane, or you know, I can order uh Sana to go bottom and game with me. Things like that for Lolita. But if you are let's say playing a Minotaur, you just find a bush and be observer what. That's all you really can do. Uh, then when your team walk past you, you press one heal for them. Very good, right? So don't play that hero lah. I feel just don't play that hero. And for Camellia, it's uh not bad as well. Uh, Camellia objective the early game same. Uh, you try to get a level four fast because the ultimate is very very strong in team fight. So before level four, you get your your level one to three right. Just help your hyper carry to farm and get some vision because uh Camellia's first skills deals very decent damage to jungle waves and most of the time when you clear finish the red and the blue buff right your hp is still uh almost full one so things like that you can take note so like y'all can write down maybe lolita cam slash camellia viable viable uh can help call do buff minotaur uh i think we should remove from game if not mmr drop things like that okay then let's say after you are level 4 and you all got your ultimate the best way for you all uh, to utilize the hero well is to start fight with it like lolita ultimate minotaur ultimate so when minotaur got rage you can flicker in ulti 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 right but you must always start fight for your team you don't uh, hide behind your hyper carry then you you play as a mino you keep heal your hyper carry then you think you are very strong no you must always start fight and don't be indecisive this kind of hero is all about making good decisions and that one good decision can snowball the entire game so if you are playing like lolita hide one bush find a good position with good mechanics right your ultimate can slam properly and then you still can initiate one more time with your first skill stun so that your hyper carry can secure that kill so things like that you all can take note lah yeah play aggressively to the point that there is no spells for you and then be defensively things like that okay yeah so don't be a mino main huh guys don't be a mino main and prove to me ah uh, i'm a bronze mino player okay <laughs> so let me move on to the next slide yeah wait just let me answer a quick question uh. okay yeah i saw this guy he's been asking for the hero lot i'm not sure if we covered in the first did we cover this in the first uh first xp plus Workshop. Yeah, it covered already. You can repeat lah. Like. Okay, for this hero lot option, uh, how is the enemy hero determined on the screen? Is it by a character or which enemy hero you see first during the game? <clears throat> okay, so basically, uh, okay, if I never remember wrongly, uh, if it's still the same, uh, throughout never patch at all, right? usually right, the first hero, uh, the first enemy hero you see, uh, it'll register at the most bottom. So when once he's registered, uh, it'll register there for the whole game already. Mm. So subsequently, when the next hero, next hero you see come in, ah, uh, then it'll be on top of the, on top of the first, the first hero. hero you see, uh. yeah. So it will continue like that. So it will once you uh, like next time you see them again, ah, uh, it will still be on the on the same spot, uh, same position, uh, basically. Yeah. Oh, well okay, done. Okay. Well done. Okay. Anyway, uh, to Kaleo, right? Uh, this this hero lock session was done with uh Sana. Yeah, please walk. Please do the work of shame. Okay, Leo. Thank you. Okay. Anyway, let's move on. Okay? Time is running. So, what should be the objective as a support mage? So, for support mage, right? Uh, obviously, you, you are the poke. You are the damage dealer, but you are just only poking. You are not the one that secure kills. Or kills secure in some uh, terminology. KS. Okay? So, the main laner, if 1-2-2, you are most likely uh, playing the bottom like uh what what should it be like kaja nana things like that digi those are the better ones okay but for the mid tank the mid one the one three one you can play things like uh faramis you can play digi actually all the support mage you can play but who you need to poke that's the main question so let's say you are playing one two two correct you play one two two you play a digi at bottom you just keep zoning the, the fighter so how it works is the lane reach the lane keys already right they're going to get married lah uh, the marksman and the fighters will also fight. So when the marksman and fighter fight, the diggy just walk in front, keep it, keep trading HP with the fighter. Then throw three, four bombs on the fighter. Right, the fighter low HP. Don't dare to come. Try to get him away from the EXP, but EXP as you can. Then from there, 
Once you level 1, level 2, you ask the mid lane, come dive, easy game, kill secure, snowball, we win the game. Things like that is very simple. Yeah. So if let's say you are playing like a Rafaela, you can't do that lah, like what a Diggy can do. Let's say you are playing a Rafaela, then uh, no choice lah, you poke him lesser lah. You poke him lesser, you A him a little bit. Then uh, follow your hyper carry or your bottom marksman to go and take the raid, uh, things like that. But uh, really don't recommend this. Unless you, you really want to play one to do, really go and play Diggy, uh, Diggy or Valia just because the zoning on the fighter right is very very good for the game itself. You can make the fighter like AFK over there. So yeah. Uh so second one is let's say I'm the Nana, I'm the support right, I'm the mage right. I will be poking their mid tank. Reason being let's say a grog. A grog will usually charge the Q and try to clear the mid three wave. Uh, the three crit wave. So what you can do is since you anticipate incoming right, just throw your spells on him and AA him a little bit. Uh because all these things uh, you a you know if you work hard a a a hard enough right you you very fast uh actually don't have HP also, because like I said tank in Mobile Legend is not very 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 tanky it's just a little bit tankier than others, yeah, so this is the one of the main objective then you must always roam with either your core or tank so that you can dish out some damage CC behind your tank, uh actually if you are very very strong you don't have to do that but if you are just someone that learns mage for a while. Uh, you go and do it because uh, you can burst with your tank and then their tank will roam away and when the tank will roam away right you will get good amount of vision then from there you will win the game so because they don't have vision ma, then they scared so they don't know where your gang so when your gang is usually usually the side lanes will easily get caught up yeah so the third point is in early game right you always anti uh, participate team fights even though there's a chance you might die uh, reason being, let's say you're playing a uh, Faramis or Nana, right? Let's say you're playing Faramis. Actually, when you're in a team fight, your objective is to die. But when you die, you press all your spells, press your ultimate, make sure your spirit comes out. Uh, make sure you deal more damage to them. Yeah, high damage, high tankiness, high death in your stats. Yeah. So for KDA players like LY4 out there, don't play Faramis. Then if let's say you're playing like a Nana, right? Uh, also stand in the uh aggressive way because you got your passive you might even take flicker in some scenarios there are very low chance you might even die trigger your passive then from there you can actually do more lah. yeah uh, your opponents cast the spells on you instead of their, your, your team sparksman is actually very good so things like that you must take note hey i need to play aggressive i play nana yeah i still got my uh passive so i, I won't die so much things like that uh you can save your cost your cost can snowball you can win more games okay so in late game, support mage, uh, the damage is as high as a core mage. Yeah, and also it may be higher than most of the hyper carries as well. But uh, late game, uh, you need to be very careful in your positions like your hyper carry marks, uh, marksman because uh, your, as much as your damage is high, you also become the squishy marksman attributes by then. So from then on, you need to know that actually, hey, I need to play a bit uh, just now, early game, I tell you play aggressive, right? Now, late game, you play slightly passive. You find the timing to go in. Unless, again, you are Faramis. Faramis, like I said, no matter what, just go in, press all your spells, die. Wake up as a spirit, go and press all your spells and die again, okay? So, things like that is very simple. And you need to understand that, actually, Kaja, even though uh, it's a support mage and its range is not as far as others, right? It is still dealing good amount of damage in the late game so in early game it, for now because of the nerf it don't do as much as the last time so yeah you all need to take note lah so the best i would say you all really really want to play uh you all want to learn a support mage i give you a uh, nana and diggy for it lah yeah and things like lolita camellia mino right those are for the tank the tank rolls lah so uh in the support role best for now in the one three one use the support mage or the support support okay okay next uh i read one question uh. Luo Yi tier 1 support yeah. sorry Luo Yi is not a support Luo Yi is a mage and it's a better mage okay it's a mage same as Valia and same as uh, Selena la. things like that okay yeah so let me move on to the next slide next slide is so, it for all the uh, 
for all the questions pertaining to the offlane, uh, I will answer them later lah, so don't be... Yeah, don't later the offlane, she will talk everything. I sit here, drink my water, uh, disturb you all in the chat, okay? So now let me go through my support. So what should be the objective as a support support? So support support, also the poke and the damage on the main laner, right? If want to do right, it's also the main tank. But if can, you all can play more aggressive than the mage tank. Like uh, Rafaela or Angela or Diggy, right? Uh, let's talk about Angela. Your, your, your first spell can actually make a tank uh, cannot move. So let's say you can do that and you all are playing two mage comp. I mean, one mage and one support support comp. Uh, like a Valia with a Angela, right? The tank don't need to walk already. Unless the tank got a flicker or a sprint. Otherwise, most of the time, you all will get first blood. Just be very aggressive. Cast your first spell on them. And when get a kill right, uh, get a snowball early by taking two, two of the healing crab. So one of the good thing about having a support and a mage and mid lane is uh, chances are you'll win the lane and you will get both healing crabs and from there you will have better rooming la. But one thing about this is you cannot invade. When you invade, the opponent uh clumps you up from behind, right? Most of the time uh you have you'll get first blood by the opponent team and then uh, your team will score UK, then you will score him F, then score here, score there, you all report each other, lose the game, okay? So don't go and invade. So always, again, roam with either your core so that to ensure the core will have some debuff or buff spells to run. So let's say your Rafaela, always run at the same position as the, let's say a marksman and a Granger, okay? So when the Granger is going to blue, you walk with him. You heal him to make him give him the movement speed. When you are doing, let's say, the blue, right? You tank maybe 20% for him. Then you walk slightly behind. Let, let, the, let the blue buff hit the Granger one, two time. Then the Granger also uh, got gotten like some damage, right? You press the heal, you gain more heals overall. La. So you all have to take note things like that. So uh, also, if you are playing like uh, Angela, obviously things like level getting level 4 is also important. Ah. Never say I never put, means not important. In fact, support supports uh, usually only have uh, do more in level 4 because of Angela LT, Digi LT, Rafaela LT not so much. I would say maybe Estes LT. So things like that, you all have to take note. Yeah. So the third point which is which I just mentioned right is soak some damage probably around half before standing behind is the best idea why you are a support actually a support is uh, not to care your stats and you're not someone that deals a lot of damage you're just someone to help skill the hyper carry well uh, help to tank a bit for the tank or your hyper carry during the team fight then from there you can play better so things like that uh, don't be a support that full HP when your team all dies uh, things like that shows that you are not a support player, you are a mage player, or you are a marksman player, okay? So in late game, right, your timing to use your ultimate is very important. So for all three of the heroes, especially Diggy, right, use it very wisely. Like you see your Atlas, Atlas, rush to you, rush to you, you know he want to, you want, he want to ulti already. But you need to ask yourself whether he behind got people or not. If Let's say behind Atlas, right? Let's say it's a uh, uh, melee, they, they have a melee hyper carry land slot. He is not nearby. Don't use the ultimate on the Atlas. You can save it for some uh, something else. Okay? Then, let's say you press ult, but you saw a land slot also running over. Or you saw a Fasa very far, but he can press ult on the team fight. You use the ultimate. When the Atlas want to. Uh, do the charging right, you can actually press already. So things like that you need to take note of. Not just timing, you also need to see whether the opponent CC, is it worth to press or not. Yeah. So you don't press be uh, because of the shield most of the time. And if you do that right, means you soak way too much damage compared to others. <laughs> so in a way that, let's say uh, they, they, the opponent have a land slot. The opponent come and chase you right, make you low. They also have an atlas. Do you press your ultimate? You have to right. But in the first place, you shouldn't get pokes from, from Lancelot. So things like that, you all have to take note of. Lah. Yeah. So that's all regarding the objective for the support support. So we shall move on. Time is the essence. So for the usage of supports, right? Buff on different occasions. So what are the buffs on different occasions? 
So for different scenarios like Digi Ultimate to debuff CC and give temporary shields. So like I said just now, at last press LT right? Ah, you all need to press LT, correct? But you all have to see whether opponent behind got follow up. No follow up, don't press. No, no, don't need to press. Wait until you see, you determine, oh, this fight is here. They are going to give us heavy damage, then you press. Then it is good for the team. Rafaela, holy healing to speed boost their movement speed for 50% and some healing. For Rafaela, healing the speed boost uh, is very fast CDR. So, as much as it is very fast, right? Uh, after the early game, try not to press so much because in the team fight, it is very important for your hyper carry. Like, uh,. Uh, carry or uh, Ishushin can maybe use the fifty percent speed more you more wisely doing the team fight, yeah. So things like that. Take note. Uh, the one of the take note spells and for Angela is actually the ultimate, correct? The ultimate gives you a lot of shield and also when Angela press its skills, uh, the person that went into the soul of the hero got movement speed increased, correct? So for that one, uh, the timing is. When the fight begins, uh, after a little bit, don't go in before the fight. Don't go in after the fight. Go in when maybe let's say, okay, you got a Tamus at top lane. You are level four bottom Angela. The Tamus haven't fight, but you can anticipate the gang. So you inform your mid lane to go top. At the same time, uh, when the fight occurs by maybe a Cho slam him and kick him, or or maybe uh, let's say a Lolita. Uh, ulti is on him, you press the ultimate. Why? Because they were forced to fight there and you will you most likely win the fight. But if let's say you press before the Cho kicks you or slam right, chances are they are just going to disengage and instead of you winning the team fight, uh, you will have a very hard time to win the fight because they will, they will pull back. And when they pull back and deal damage right, uh, it is actually more advantageous towards them. <coughs> yeah. So actually, uh, most Angela players are, uh, uh, for me is uh, just need communication. So let's say I'm playing with Sana, so I will give uh Sana the very good timing to press LT on me, if needed. If I'm playing a side lane call or what lah, yeah. Most of the time as a tank, I don't get his shield. So hopefully, uh, one day I'll get his shield. Yeah, hopefully. Okay. Let me see if there's any. Notable questions. Uh, can Valia push Alice back when he's lying in our team? Yes, you can. As long as you use the push on the... Do you call it the body or the octopus or what? Uh, the body. The armor is the behind. The body, yeah. Uh, okay. As long as you press the skill on his body, right, it, you can push him back. See, uh... Yep, that's true. So regarding that, right? Unless he he have a very good timing of when you when your firewall push him, and then if he don't push him, uh, and he manage to flicker in front of your fireball, right? Firewall, right? Means you're most of the time dead already from there. So it's a uh, seventy five twenty five, meaning Valia has a seventy five percent against the Atlas. A good Valia will never get caught by a good Atlas. But a good Atlas can play uh, 50-50 with a Valia. Eh, confused or not? Your mates, come, 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 forgot it, right? Okay, there are Q&A we discuss more, okay? Okay, so for support. Uh, support is actually similar to tank, but am I too paper to soak damage? Actually, uh, you are, uh, actually have maybe 60 to 70% of uh, tank attributes. So try to get some defense item to soak some damage for the cost if your tank is not doing the job. But if you're playing with KZP, right, don't need to buy tank item unless they got assassins to die field. Hashtag play with KZP. So uh, that's the main thing. So what you can buy for all these supports that wants to die field is actually immortality. Uh, Athena, if let's say they have a Fasa that can deal a far range damage or they got a Chang'e where your tank can also can't really soak that damage, right? So you can buy that. Uh, dominant size for the CDR, the movement speed, and the slow on the opponent. 
then uh, consume mass and courage mass. So the con consume mass and cur courage mass only can buy one, uh, by the way. And this mask, right, I really recommend you buy at the third or fourth uh, item slot. Reason being is they are not very tanky, but they give you a uh, good mobility slash uh, good cover. So let's say you are, you are, you are fighting a uh, 1 1. Or the 1 1 press ulti, you can actually conceal your other team. Or you can actually press the speed boost to run away. The further distance, the 1 1 ulti will stop. So that's one main thing too. Yep. So use your debuff and buff to reduce the damage reduction or give good healing to your cause. So after you are let's say a Estes, you soak half, you soak half, you just heal yourself. Or let's say you are Rafaela, you soak a bit, you soak twenty five percent, you walk back, you heal your teammate. Cause by then your team will also gonna poke. You heal your teammate, your teammate gets heal. Is uh overall mathematics counts. You gain more heals than let's say your tank, your tank poke gonna poke. Your tank got poke and you need to heal your tank. Overall healing will be lesser than if you all two heal together. Yeah, you all go and try, go and try. This is not easy for me to explain. But it's a mathematics thing lah. Okay? Yeah, a degree holder can do it. So can you all. <laughs> okay, next. Okay, last slide. Ooh, where is the most negative slide? So uh, I need to go fast ah. Uh. Actually left one hour only. One hour fifteen minutes. So when should I use the different type of support and overall what are my primary role as the different types of support? So uh, tank support, you play more like a tank but uh, you also need to, you need to initiate a lot of fights with your ultimates, with your flicker, with uh, your ultimates. Basically ultimates is the way why you need to initiate fights. Okay, then as a mid support, most of the time you initiate the fight behind your your tanks right so chances are the fight goes halfway then you then you utilize your spells but uh a mid support the most amount of damage you can get is only actually when uh you you do some pullback fights what i mean by pullback fight is when the enemy is chasing you and whoever you are with uh, and you all keep running away uh, run one step shoot one step one, run one step shoot one step right and as a mid support right you actually can deal the best amount of damage during that type of scenarios. Unless you're a Faramis, then you go head to head. Ah, things like that. So uh for support mage, stand at a very good position going into the fight almost the same time as your tank. So let's say your tank is a Kufra, your tank charging the Q. What you can do is you also can go in try to rush in also. If let's say you got a courage mask better, you press your courage mask, rush in with the Kufra. Oh, I tell you, win the game already. MMR increased to 1,500. You all win, right? Yeah, all these good tips. Huh? So for the support support, uh, standing beside your core to give the best rally while soaking a small amount of damage slash CC, right? And timing of your ultimate is very important. So when you're playing the, Ange you're playing the Angela, like I said just now, uh, remember, uh, don't re you all forget, I'm not going to repeat. Right? I don't repeat. Right? No time, right? sorry. Uh. You're playing the Diggy, uh, I also don't repeat. Right? So sorry. Uh. Uh, I can say one more, the Camellia one, or the Camellia one, the ultimate, uh, is also very important, but it's not under support support. I want to stress it that it moves to the support tank role, because it's very tanky for its attributes. And also the uh, ultimate is more of like initiation ultimate, la. it's not really an ultimate where you really need good timing. You need good timing when your team is with you, then it works a lot, but if you... How to say, you, you are always in front already and your team must be always behind you following up. Then you don't really have need a good timing. You just need to land the ultimate. Because for Camilla, it's very, actually very hard to land the good ultimates. And when we talk about Camilla, right? Later, maybe Wasabi will come in and talk to us. So we shall move on. So he don't come and disturb us, okay? Okay, so now we'll be talking about Marksman. So before we move to Marksman, is there any questions regarding support? Let me check. Uh. Oh, I think I saw one. Or oh, should a support stick to their hyper, or should they be at the back line behind the opponent's first tower to zone them? Please don't go behind the opponent's first tower to zone them. Uh. <laughs> if you are playing a hyper, if you are playing a hyper strat, uh, one three one, uh, then your support should. 
mostly be at mid, ma. How can you go to the opponent first tier tower and zone them? You will get like cap everywhere from left and right. Eh. So please don't do that, lah. So I think for supports, right, depending on what kind of support you want, But if you are the support, support, lah, like Raf, Rafaela, Digi, uh, still go what support, lah. Uh, Esther's this kind ah, uh, please please just stick to your hyper lah. Uh. So uh, but unlike if you're maybe a Minotaur or maybe a uh, Lolita, you can choose not to stick lah. Uh. You can go with you can go get some vision in the grass or what, then let your other mage support or whatever follow your follow your follow your hyper around lah. Uh. Yeah. Okay. But please don't please don't don't zone them at the first tier tower. Uh. Okay, well done. No more questions. Let Q and A then do. And main place record down those questions, yeah. Q&A, then we answer, okay? So, for marksman, uh, what can you do as a marksman? Pros, those are all these are the learning objectives. So, what is marksman weak against? What are the cons of it? And what are the objective as a marksman, which there's two types? And how to maximize your damage in a team fight and when to jump into the fight as a marksman? This one, I wanted to ask video from LY4. LY still don't want to give me until today. Hashtag kick LY out of RG, eh? I uh, need to own self go and play one Kimi game in stream and then ah yeah finally uh got a uh, got a uh, savage good 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 yeah yeah anyway uh guys uh please go and uh sign up for the mentoring session ah uh. five minute will go go close already so please go 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 and go and go and apply if you have not applied for the mentoring session. You will be playing games with Sana. Nine of you will be selected. I will be there to explaining what are you all doing and what should you all do and what are the good things that you all did. Okay? Okay, okay. Go sign up, go sign up, go sign up. Go, 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 go. Okay. Okay, I, I'll skip you already. Those that apply, uh, just on the volume and then uh, listen to me. At the same time, go look into the comments. The admins there will be helping you guys. So, uh, when should I use the different type of marksman and overall what are my primary role as the different types of marksman? So in marksman, there are early game marksman, mid game marksman and non-meta marksman. Uh, non-meta marksman, I talk lesser, I talk more early game marksman and mid game marksman, okay? So, we shall move on. So, as a marksman attributes. Marksman attributes, very squishy, number one. Uh, one, uh, one assassin come in, you are gone. One mage come in, you are gone. One tank, grog tank, you come in, you also gone. Oh, everything gone, very tiring, play marksman. But actually very good also. Because marksmen have high single damage. Most marksmen such as Granger, such as Carry, right? All these are single damage dealers where they deal a decent amount of damage but still they require good farming speed. So as a marksman, go and watch maybe LI4 and learn how to farm well. Uh, the reason why he's, he's in RG is because he are good, he's good at farming. And he farm, farm items faster than other marksmen lah. So if you think you can farm better than him, go and apply to the chat. Uh, uh, hashtag KZP, uh, LY4 out. Oh, I almost said myself out eh. Jesus. Okay, anyway, go and hashtag LY4 out and then go and apply RSG be our marksman. So it have low to medium mobility. So usually the meta marksmen only have one mobility skills like Grincher, Second Spell, Moscow Bling, uh, what, what, what else is that? The carry dash, uh, Isushin dash. So a lot of the meta marksmen have actually one blink slot. So they are also the blink also not very long because most of the time you will take either purify or retreat. Chances of you taking on a flicker is very low. And from what I see from life four play, uh, most of the time he will just take uh, retreat or purify. That's all. He don't take flicker. I think flicker is very bad. You can go and ask him when he needs to. Hey, 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 sorry, yeah, guys, stop KZP out, ah, uh. LI4 out. Okay? Yeah. Anyway, uh, for marksman, it requires a lot of um, positioning. Without good positioning, anybody can kill you. You can just uh, farm one red buff and then you're going to a team fight, you die because your position is not strong. Yeah. So, for marksman, it requires a uh, red buff. All marksman requires red buff. The red buff is like yours. If it's not yours, uh, chances are. Uh, you deal lesser damage than any of them or any of your teammates. So if you don't have a red buff, the only marksman I really think that is really good is carry, cause carry procs by his passive and maybe Kimi Ooh. because but Kimi you need to get the glowing one then with the blue then it deals more damage. But with a red buff you deal more damage. So regardless, just get the red buff as marksman. 
So for marksman attributes, you are also weak against assassin and mages, correct? Yeah. So let's move on. Yeah, move on, move on. So what can you do as a marksman? So for marksman, you have to farm, 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 and farm. Okay. You take the wraith. Okay. You farm the wraith. You farm the red buff. After you farm the red buff, you can either take the small then go go crab, or you can go. Uh, take the wave, take the blue, then go take the gold crab. See your timing, okay? Then from there, uh, chances are uh, the turtle or tower uh, is spawned. If haven't spawned, you take more junglers. That's why I push out the jungle a bit. Yeah, to highlight myself. Cause I'm not very strong at marksman, but I can give you all decent uh, tips on it, okay? Then if there is turtle, take turtle. No, no turtle, take tower. No tower, take jungle. Ah, uh, no jungle. Wait for red blue buff. Ah, uh, no red blue buff. Go and poke the enemy. But I really don't recommend you guys to go and poke lah, unless you all have good strats. So as a marksman, farm, 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 farm. Okay. So, ah, uh, once you farm until you have good enough of damage, go and have a, uh, ah, uh, get good item already, right? Once you got the item power spike, right? You can deal massive dips already, and dips meaning my damage per second. So as times goes by, you are carry. Oh, shoo, shoo, shoo. So, 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 right? But you deal a lot of damage to opponent, so that is very good. Then you're unable to allow their tank uh, scout due to pokes you give. So once you got one item call, or you got nothing to do, right? You clear all your jungle. You take red, you take blue. You take gold crab, you take healing crab, you take turtle, right? The tower very risky take. Never mind, you come in, you go poke their tank scout. Once you poke their tank scout, then you go take their uh, the turtle or the tower. You win the game. Objective easy, right? You write down that farm, 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 farm. Uh, don't die early game, huh? Uh, take red buff, huh? Uh, farm all the jungle. Take all the gold crab I can find. Uh, good position. Uh, got turtle. Ask him take turtle. No turtle. Wah, tower scared. Take tower. Don't want take tower. Uh, go poke the enemy tank or go and uh try to dive the opponent with your support or your tank. Yeah, so these are all the things you all can do. So, uh, let me read one question, yeah? Yeah. It, it's true that Kerry has a slight flexibility build compared to other marksmen, and in a team fight, does a marksman have to join the fights in the early game to poke or just continue farming first? <sighs> I think the, the marksman, right, uh, try to come into team fight once you got the power spike item. If you don't have, then better not lah. Yeah, but if have, once you got a power spike item like a clock, you got a DHS. Go and go and have a good team fight lah. If not, you have to really wait for your team to set up queues for you lah. That's the least I can say. Yeah, so these are the things you need to take note of. Any question, Sarah? We don't have much time, right? But okay, never mind. Let's go for one short one. Mm. Is it true that Carry has a slightly flexible build compared to other marksmen? And in the team fight, does a marksman have to join the fights in the early game to poke or just continue for the first? Uh, in my opinion, I think Carry is the most flexible marksman, lah. He can build anything, and he can still dish out damage because of his passive. So basically, you can you can go for builds like uh like full damage builds like. Uh, BOD, uh, all the damage items, I uh, can go bloodlust, BOD, all these, all these items, uh, then his wheel will be very pain. But if, if you go for like uh, Golden Star, VHS, then his, uh, his passive will be very useful. Uh. So he, you can even build him tanky and he will still hit like a truck. Uh. So yeah, he's the most flexible, flexible marksman. Uh. Then in the team fight, does the marksman have to join a fight in the game? You can choose not to join the fights and let your let your team take the fights if you if you are behind in farm or if you if you are if you are level four and you have double buff you can you can also join the fights with them if like uh how do I say uh I think sis I think you 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 really need to see situation lah if like let's say uh. Let's say they are they are very low level, and then your team catch them, and then you're near, then you just go for the fight, lor. But if you're not near, then you just don't you don't don't uh especially go down for the fight, lah. You just prioritize on your early game farm and get your get your first item power spike because usually, uh, MMs mostly they power spike by the first item. So try to get your first item, like maybe you are playing a clot, then try to get your DHS. Don't don't fight so much, lah. 
because if you go and go into the fight uh, and you don't actually get a kill or anything uh, you just waste your time uh. so yeah okay thank you so much Sana so we shall move on to the next slide which is this slide so what is marksman weak against so for heroes or roles right marksman is definitely weak against assassin like i mentioned just now so what are the assassin link lancelot hellcat basically all all assassins there's no assassin i see in the assassin tab marksman is not weak against but with a good uh tank of support right the marksman is actually still okay to fight against all the assassins but if the tank is not so defensive uh, like me uh, you really have to rely on yourself and your experience on how you should dodge all these assassins or what whatsoever already <coughs> cause for assassin i really don't know how a marksman should uh fight with how 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 is the macro well because when i ask ly i shake head and i say never mind lah. don't never mind yeah he, he will tell me things like uh you just pick roger or you roger fight well against lancelot and link yeah he won't that there is a there is definitely an alternative way to fight all this but uh, he just never give me an answer lah. So maybe one day you all go his stream and ask him. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the second one will be the long range mage. So for example, you are playing a carry. A carry what a carry scared of long range mages like Fasa, Sishnon, Kagura. As a Kagura, you can deal a good decent amount of damage on the uh, carry. And the carry can't touch you. We have tried the distance already. For the let's say Kagura, Umbrella, Fasa ultimate, right? Carry cannot touch you. No matter what. Unless you are playing Granger. But now again, Granger Ultimate is based on loss HP. So using it to initiate is very bad now. Yeah, so all the marksmen I think about it uh, really cannot fight against long range mage. Yeah, last time Granger still okay because of its uh, ultimate. Now the ultimate becomes a bit like you need to poke him before you can use kind of ulti. So it's useless. Then for Kimi, they also nerf its range. So again, all marksmen are weak against long range mage. So for the third one that marksmen are weak against are uh, Kufra, Cho, Joy, Head, Kaja, Atlas. Uh, this one I think it depends on how good your mechanic is in marksman. Because when I'm playing all these Kufra, Cho, uh, I fight against like BTR brands, uh, the chances of him getting caught for me is very low. Because as a Kufra, I dive right, I use my first skill, uh, he can heal already, then from there he can be aware of how he should dodge already. But LY4 tell me Kufra, Cho, Joy, Head, all this, he's scared. Uh, uh, so how? So this one is really optional slash depend on how good you are. But I would say if you are training a uh, marksman, you definitely scared. But if you play marksman for your whole life one, since long ago, okay, then you... You should be able to know how to dodge all these divers lah. That is a way lah. You should, but the thing is, you need to understand how all these, uh, divers, uh, how they think, like the kufra. They always, he, he need to stand bush what? So you need to, uh, know how it thinks and then from there place a uh, place against it. So <coughs> if let's say you are fighting against a uh, kufra, you fighting against a uh, kufra, uh, kufra kimi, uh, what's the third one ah? Uh? Kufra, Kimi, Uranus, Tamus, and what's the last one? Uh, what mage? Any mage, uh, Nana, okay? Uh, the only thing you need to look out for as a marksman, like you're playing a Granger, is the Kufra, correct? So when you're looking out for a Kufra, you just keep to hear, need to hear the sound, like the Daredevil. Uh, you hear already, right? Wow, you know he's charging, right? You hold your second spell, and when he dash, right? Release your second spell, and drag at the correct place, lah. You don't, he jump you, you slide to him ah, then then you don't play marksman ah, huh? ah things like that uh need to tactic a bit uh need to keep and your eyes your ears on it because they are the only reason why you will die most of the time yeah so take note yeah then the second one is the bad position so uh if your marksman have bad position right you cannot dodge the divers or bitch let one but also reason being because of the map terrain right some of the map parts are, uh, no matter how you stand, uh, you will gonna, uh, you will got, you won't, you won't be able to dodge it, lah. So, uh, need to go and have an experience on it. Yeah, when you got a good experience on the marksman and you feel that in this position, every time I roam from here to here, I always gonna, I always got poked by fifty percent. Then from then on, you try to, uh, think of another puffing to puff. 
so you won't get poked by the divers or mages and hopefully you, you can play better lah then the third one is because you got bad position then you maybe got into a first blood the kufra jump on you you cannot run you die so from there you are very weak already you lost your red buff momentum you lost your blue yeah you lost the puffing momentum then uh, you have to take all the farm from the side lanes take the jungle but when you're taking all this right uh, most of the time the opponent is trying to dive your side lanes the top and bot and when they when, when they die you will have less one call and from there you may actually need a way to come back to the game by picking off them take some risk and maybe go and camp one bush with your tank or your mage then one shot the opponent hopefully if you got the kill from there take the turtle take your red buff blue buff again reset okay but let's say you are losing the game like maybe the buff haven't spawned maybe 30 seconds later you die eh, you die yeah? and you the red buff need 30 seconds and your spawn time is 15 seconds I would say it's okay it is not as costly as once you gotten your red buff and you die so uh, so let's say if you your red buff is still full right try to maximize the farm and try to play passive if you are not very confident marksman then when your red buff is maybe half to maybe left one quarter then you go and die be aggressive lah things like that so things, these are the things that uh, you need to know yeah so next marksman what should be the objective as a marksman mate so just now I was talking about marksman in general now I'll be talking about the marksman mate later I talk about the marksman side lanes lah so taking farms until you purchase the power spike item for the marksman I said just now so farm well at the same time right give your tank uh, and support the space to get their level 4 when you take your jungle right when you take your jungle uh, then one of the tank or support will usually stand middle uh, and clear the way for you uh, don't don't tell them to wait and give you the 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 creep wave because the thing is right as a tank as a support you really really need the the level 4 before the tank and support can do something so Try to find things to do when your tank and support is get level 4 uh, And hopefully when level 4 see this Level 4 will have more initiative to give us his farm And we will carry him more Okay So these are the things He needs to know And the marksman out there needs to know So when they are level 4 they got a good ultimate They can land very good spells on the opponent And once he lands good spells uh, They got killed You got the kill You farm You got the goal 250 goal win-win scenario correct yeah so these are the things that you all try to look out for and tap uh, go to the tap oh my my diggy is level 3 I'll give him one more wave I stay at bottom poke the bottom hopefully I can get a kill out of it if not I will use his level 4 to my advantage and maybe take the turtle or something else okay so the early game pace is a big fa major factor for tank and support yeah, like I said, you you give them level, level 4, they help you carry the game. Mid game not to get caught by initiator and not giving a single death would be ideal. So when you're in mid game, right, when you're playing, actually early to mid, it's not mid game, early to mid game, uh, once you reach the mid game, uh, uh, try to dish out as much damage as possible. Then from there, you can actually skill better and the hyper carry role will actually exist and your farm will be actually better. Yeah, so what are the examples of the lineup for initiator? One, Kufra, Belmont, Carry, Valia, Tamus. You need to look out for Carry, uh, Kufra. Valia is quite long range, but it's, it's, it's very, very squishy, so you'll be behind. Belmont don't have a setup skill. Maybe you will need to scat the Tamus a bit when you use your escape spell. Because once it dive you, within 3 seconds you will die. Carry will most likely not poke you, poke the tank, so you will treat the tank HP. Yeah. The example number two line up. Atlas, Uranus, Kimi, Sicilian, Cho. Look out for Atlas and Cho. Yeah, even you take Purify is still uh you still need to uh watch out. Because Atlas uh ultimate you let's say you purify the Cho coming from behind kick you, you will still die, correct? Uh at the same time you also need to look out on Uranus when the game is late game. So to do that you need to shut him the Uranus down at late game. Kimi only need to care the ultimate. Sicilian, if you are playing like uh, carry and you want to aggressive 
uh, actually it blocks the aggressive path already for this kind of hero because Cicillon can use the claw to to CC you as well so uh, maybe if you are as a marksman you can't play aggressive but you can slowly poke them off la, things like that so next so for marksman side uh, the objective as a side marksman is no death in the early game like I said just now for mid one be vocal about the laner that you are facing if you are playing 1-3-1 so uh, for this one let's say you are playing 1-3-1 it, it shouldn't be here right? never mind if you are playing 1-3-1 right you are, you are usually the oh the side lane marksman like 1-1 one, one. so when the when you are fighting a Uranus you try to vocal to the mid lane uh, where the Uranus go things like that yeah then when you can you if you can win the lane then good luck if not you just be vocal and farm lor. third try to zone the fighter to not be able to get farm with your support so let's say you're playing one two two you are a uh, granger with a diggy the diggy try to zone the fighter uh once you got enough farm like maybe you're level six you can try to zone the fighter already and but it only occurs when let's say you have a good head start la. things like that okay Ah, uh, then let's move on to look at the mini map to see if their mid is coming and take red buff only after mid game and only if the mid lane is uh, assassin so like if the mid lane is a land slot then after mid game you can take away the red buff and you will do more damage than assassin like a land slot already with the red buff yeah so things like that write down write down then try it out in rank games okay so before that, uh, before showing a video, thank you LY4 for all the uh, LY4 marksman tips but he, he actually didn't send me the video so I cut this video from my stream and I managed to get a savage shot of it so I shall play it and actually for this one right is uh, the, the open, I was playing a uh, viewer rank with my team and then uh, viewer rank and then I see, hey, actually this one I deal quite a good damage. So the Alice managed to catch off the one one la. And if you look at them right, they do not have an initiator to poke me off other than Hilda. So actually I can play aggressively and since they are skill shot heroes. So things like that is actually very good. But actually at the, at the same time, my team is doing very good CCs la. I'm not uh, dealing good, I'm good, dealing good enough of damage at the same time ah. I, I'm not dying. So these are the kind of marksmen you need to do. And in order to do that, right, you see, whoa, I also like this. Because I cannot believe myself. <laughs> so, uh, things like that, right, just don't die in a team fight and keep shooting, keep hitting. Because like that, you will do a lot of damage already. Okay? So, good video, good video. All crap, all crap. Good savage. Yeah. No choice already. LI4, do you want to give me? I need to dig up. I need to dig up one marksman for y'all to see. So if y'all still do not know me, please go and follow my Facebook page at KZP. Yeah. Uh, this is a short advertisement. Okay. So anyway, marksman. The last slide, yeah, because we are running out of time. When should I use the different type of marksman? And overall, what are my primary role as the different types of marksman? So there's early game marksman, there's mid game marksman, there's non-meta marksman. So for the early game marksman, right, there's Granger, there's YSS, there's Roger. Actually, I think uh, all these marksmen are actually the better marksmen now la, because uh, if the early game right don't work well for marksmen, la, the marksmen are very hard to do stuff also. So they are more stable for your team. So you use all these marksmen, you get level, you get level 4, you get your first item, you get turtle. All these early game, you get one first blood and you get one turtle. La. You can snowball the game. If you don't get all these two, these two things, right, chances are you can't win the game or you can't snowball the game. All these early game marksmen also you need to be aggressive you need to invade with your team so with without any aggressive uh skill shots or without any aggressive uh, rotations right try not to use all these uh, because all these re requires will skill will skill not as good as the other marksmen like i think la yeah ly4 tips all this yeah and then the uh, mid game marksman uh, there's clock kimi one one all this you will skill usually at your second item your first item you can do this amount of damage but once you get two items whoo, i tell you you can get the savage like i did eh. so this one thing you need to look out for so next time hashtag uh kzp mm <laughs> so there are also the non-meta mark spend i really really recommend y'all don't use it for now uh use all the early game or mid game mark spend use them 
take uh, for the early game, get first blood, get total, invade, win the game. Take some towers afterwards, snowball, okay already. Mid game marksman, get one item, uh, fight a little bit, don't fight so much, then get your second item, then be aggressive. Then for the non-meta marksman, really... <sniffs> Sana, how many items are? Non-meta marksman? Yeah. Oh, I think two can already. Two ah. Yeah. I think two. Okay ah, two can already, but won't deal as much damage as the mid game marksman. So it's can, but. Yeah, yeah it's can lah. But maybe you need three. Three, you can be a god. Yeah, things like that. So take every, note. Like that, every event three also got already. Yeah, but for for other marksman, there is less killing than compared to like no meta mm. marksman lah. Like a Moskov got 3 item, I tell you. Whew! Irita got 3 item, I tell you. Your Granger cry. Yeah, Granger gonna 1 ultimate poke. Granger cry already. Yeah. Okay, sorry guys. That's all for Mark's man. Okay? Yeah. Anyway, I will read one question before I pass to Sana. Yeah, I think Sana want to sleep already. Okay, let me see. This season, Mark's man is ranked by Clock first. Granger second cavity. No. Uh how marksman is rated is based on the meta and then also it based on how the player plays. If the player is more comfortable at let's say Roger, Roger will be his best marksman. It's not based on like like you know, green like clock is the best. In my opinion, uh, if you really want to talk about which marksman is the best, right? For this meta, I think YSS with good mechanics is the best. Because of its early game, because of how annoying it is. And if you know how to trigger the passive and the uh, first skill, right, you are very good at it. Really. Go and try, go and try. Okay, so that's all about Marksman. Okay, anyway, shout out to LI4 again for his tips. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I need to find one more Marksman already. Okay, Sana, okay. bring it on. Okay, so now I'll take over for the fighter. So I'll just run through the learning objective very quickly. Lah. So. What should be your objective as a fighter? So should I speak push? Should I um should I be going for their hyper? Should I be joining a team fight? Should I be fighting in team fights more like a lot of what? I, uh okay. Then I will I will talk to you all later. Lah. So when to join the fight? So do I join the fight when I'm when I clear the wave? I have to clear the wave. I go join the fight, or I level four there. I join the fight, or I need to have one item there. I join the fight. This kind of things are. Uh, then when to abandon the lane. So I cannot be I stay at one lane forever ma. So when when do I leave the lane to go help out my team? And when do I you know just yeah just leave the lane alone then let it push or whatever lah. So so when should I use the different type of fighter and overall what are my primary role as the different types of fighter? So this one ah, um uh, actually I have a concept of my own lah. So I believe that every game ah, for the two side lanes, uh, there must be there must always be one sustain and one will be either speed push, team fight, or whatever lah. So no matter what, there will be always one tank fighter and the other one will be whatever that's left uh, lane fighter, team fight, whatever lah, speed push fighter. Okay, let's move on. Okay. Okay, so for some examples, uh, for sustain fighters are uh, like the meta heroes right now lah, uh, Uranus, Esmo, uh, Tamus. And actually, I think there's one that we missed out. Um, I believe is uh, Belmon. Belmon is one of the strongest sustained fighters right now. And then we have for the lane fighters, we have like Jaw Head, Guinevere. Then for team fight fighters, Xbox, Badang, Liu Mod. Speed push fighters, Masha Cho. Actually, uh, now uh, the. Uh, I have to say for the Masha, uh, it's not only strong in speed push. La. Because of the, because of the uh, change in his recovery skill, uh, which is now I think from 5 seconds to 3 seconds uh, now make it uh, now he's like very very versatile he's so strong in fighting in the early game that you don't even have to focus though. you can go everywhere and scratch people and then just heal and then scratch people so depends on how you want to play it lah. okay let's let's move on okay anyway uh, let me read one question first how about Yu Zhong what do you think Yu Zhong is in the category uh, Yu Zhong is definitely the it's like it's a lot of categories lah. It's like everything. I think it's, yeah, everything. it's like everything. <laughs> Except it can push. sustain. It can fight in the lane so well. 1v1 super good. It 
can team fight them well, but but maybe not in the speed push yeah, la, yeah. Speed push quite slow, I but, think one, two, three, yeah, so everything. everything. <laughs> yeah. So everything other than the speed push lah. Yuzong is one of the most OP OP meta of Saints now. Uh, side by side with Uranus and Esmer. Okay, mm. so let's carry on. So when you think of fighter, right? Usually you think like, wow, this fighter, wow, all damn high HP and like all damn hard to kill one. But actually, there are fight, there are fighters like in the side lanes now, ah, uh, that is like Jawhead, that's like Cho, that's like maybe Hilda with a uh, Assassin Emblem. Yeah, but in general, the fighters will will scale more in HP lah, rather than the Assassin, the the other heroes lah. Then low to medium mobility. Usually, this one is very um. I won't say this is for all the heroes lah. Like you have heroes like uh Hilda, you have a you have a speed up skill, then you have like Leo Mod, you have a dash skill. So I won't really say like low low to medium lah. Like you even have Marsha, which is which is like very high mobility. Yeah. So I I won't like there are some heroes that are very low, then there are some heroes that are medium. Like low low you can be like you can say like maybe Gato because now Gato is used a lot in the side lanes, but so Gato is pre- considered pretty low mobility, la. Okay, so yeah, for fighters, are uh, usually the power spikes are, are always level four. It's like you are a badang, you are team fight fighter. You need your ulti, like you are a X ex- box. You also need your ulti to do something, la. If not, you are just useless. Then if you are Leo mod, you are, you need your horse at level four. Everything, la. Basically, everything, every uh, every fighter the power spike is at level four. Unless okay, unless you are there's one hero that maybe I don't consider the okay not 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 don't consider the power spike level but Tamus is a level spike hero is a power spike hero at level two also because of the jump because you can reset the wheel so I consider it a power spike on my own like like maybe you all don't consider it power spike la. but basically there's a level two power spike and level four power spike and this is mainly for Tamus only la. The other heroes, not much. Uh. If you want to consider, you can consider Jawhead at boss by level 2 because you have a toss and a, and the missile. You can basically pick anyone off with those two skills. You can straight away one shot the 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 support majors at level 2. Yeah. So I'll consider these few heroes the boss by at level 2 and level 4. La. So they are generally very strong against assassins because they are tanky and hard to kill. La. Usually la, tankier and hard to kill. So assassins don't usually want to face against a uh, uh, Leo mod in their face. They don't want to face a flying dragon into their face. Yeah. So yeah, then most of most most of the fighters are usually high sustain for survivability. La. Actually, this one also not not most not most true lah. Okay, because um, I'll say ah, uh, because now uh, in the off lane uh, there are heroes like. Cho, there are heroes like um, there there are weaker heroes like Jawhead, laning heroes lah. Basically, the weaker heroes like Guinevere, they are not really very high sustain. That's why that's why uh, I I tell you uh, for my concept of the side lanes now uh, there needs to be a very high sustain hero on the side, then a very strong maybe team fighter or lane fighter at the other side. So there's a balance in everything lah. So this high sustain, I think uh. I won't say it's very. I won't say it's very true for all the heroes lah. Maybe just for the Uranus, Esma, the meta meta of things now. La. That's why they are so good lah. They are high sustain. They can do damage. They can make space. And yeah, if you just let them, if you just just let them have their way ah, uh, they can just become a red boss suddenly. Like like you see right, like in RQ, uh, like Ice Chief's RQ. Wow, Sunny, we leave the lemon alone. Uh, at, the, at the side lane, uh, suddenly one monster Uranus come out of nowhere. First item, buy one dominant size, read everybody. So these are one of the very, very high sustainers. Uh. Okay, so let's carry on. I think we have... Do we have some time for some questions? We can... Can have one, uh, can have one. Okay, wait, uh, let me just answer maybe one question. Is Lunox offlane going to be meta? Because for me, it's really strong. Uh, Lunox offlane is very situational. To me, like, like I say, uh, your, com- your side lane comma uh, need to have one very tanky one. Then need to tanky and strong. Uh, tanky and strong. Then you can opt to choose for Lunox in the other side. But Lunox uh, is only for to fight against those 
high sustained heroes. Like let's say you're fighting against Esma, you're fighting against Uranus. So you pick the you know not off lane uh, to sustain against them uh, and have the option to buy uh durance so because Lunox is pretty slow in laning uh, that's why he's not gonna be roaming a lot like roaming much la a lot la like he's he sucks at he sucks at roaming la basically because he's so slow so that's why you need to have a balance and have a stronger one at the other side so maybe your team can bring you over or he can come to take over your lane and then you go go to the fight or something la. yeah um how about how about Yu Zhong? Yu Zhong is basically the one of the strongest off lane heroes right now. Like you can can you can sustain against one sustain against every hero one v one and you can team fight them well. You can just dragon to their face and then rip them all. La. That's basically Yu Zhong. Okay, so nothing much, let's carry on. So what should be the objective as a fighter? So firstly in lane uh, wave management. So wave management uh, is actually very important because like again when y'all uh watch the RQ versus RSG games uh during the uh the M MPLI uh, you realize uh, that we had very poor management. However uh, RQ had very 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 strong wave management. Like no matter what uh, they will go and clear the waves uh, before they roam, like all the time. Like if you watch the games uh first few minutes uh they are always clearing the rift. They don't matter what they do, uh, they go maybe they go roam around, uh, but they will always be back to catch the wave. Why? Because now uh, the now uh, the early waves are uh, if um they scaled up the goal for the early few waves. So the few waves are uh, very important. So basically they the fighters what, what they will try to do is they will always go and catch the wave, get the extra EXP, and then roam. Like if if they are if if they have they have stuff to do la, then they roam la, like they that maybe your team is calling for a blue invade. Then you will always go and clear the wave first and then you go roam. Like like one of the reasons is because like if you clear the wave fast, uh, then your your creeps will go into the opponent tower. Uh. So if let's say they really they they go and help out in the blue buff invade uh, and then they just like give up that wave, give up that entire wave. So they will be they will be behind by EXP and go uh. So slowly, slowly, you outscale him, and then he will just lose up to you later. So that's one of the things in uh, wave management. That's why you always have to have to try and clear or clear waves before you do anything, lah. Okay, then laning opponents where about um if this one more more apply uh, to like the stronger stronger fighters lah in general, like maybe your Uranus, your uh, Esma, your uh, Tamus. This is some of the few heroes uh, that you can control uh, where your opponent will be. Uh. So as a very, very strong fighter, uh, they cannot win you in the lane. So if they come near you, uh, you will straight away keep harass them. Like Tamus, you will keep wheel them, keep wheel them, then you stay in tower and cry. Then for like Uranus, keep jump and then skill, keep skill, then stack up the stack up the spells, right? Then you will do more and more, 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 and more damage, right? So that's why uh, these uh, high sustain fighters uh, are very hard, hard, very hard to fight against. But at the same time, uh, they can make you stay in the lane forever. Like, they can keep cutting your lane, they can keep roaming before you, then you die, die, have to clear the wave. Then, you, every time you clear the wave, then you are, you are, you are in the tower. So, so everybody know like, wow, this guy cannot come to the fight. Like, like your, maybe, maybe you're the Uranus, you tell, you tell your team, hey bros, I, I go cut a lane, then I come to the fight. Then this, this guy is not going to join, join, join for the fight, la, for their team's fight. La. Like, maybe you're, you're holding a Leomot behind. He's level four, but why he's because you clear away faster than him. Then he he's like at the tower jerking off lah, hitting some creeps lah. While you're at the fight already, maybe you savage them already. The the Leomo still at top farming creeps. So this is the this is the good thing about um uh, these very strong fighters now. Uh, which is why the Esma all these ex Esma Uranus uh Yu Zhong, all these heroes are uh, are favored so much because they win their lanes very well and they they can clear before their their opponent. So the more you clear before your opponent, uh, you basically win everything in the lane really. Cause you can roam, they can roam. So that's the that's one of the main point. Uh. Then uh next for speed push. Uh. This speed push uh, is it's not for all heroes uh. Like when to when do I speed push as a fighter? Uh? Like if let's say I am a I'm an Xbox. Like 
it would be pretty stupid for me to speed push instead of go to the fight, right? So this is very subjective, lah. So you will want to like maybe you you are picking like a Masha, you are picking a Cho, you are uh maybe to go a good speed push you also. Mark Spencer. Okay, I, I, huh? Mark Spencer. Mark Spencer. Okay, Mark Spencer, lah. Okay, j- example, you are Mark Spencer, lah. Not a fighter this time, lah. So you. As a max okay, as a max man side, uh, you are not very useful in the early early mid game because you are not a hyper right, so you scale a, a lot slower. There's no point for you to keep running around and join a fight. You can just stay in your lane and farm and farm and farm. La, like LI4 la. So for uh, yeah. the speed push can also determine that uh you can cut one wave, then join the team fight, things like that. So in a way yeah. you have to cut lah. Mm. Yeah, in a way I I don't really consider that speed push lah, but okay lah, you can you can say that as well lah. But like speed push is more for those heroes like like lane lane heroes lah, like you are you you don't do well in team fights lah generally. You're like a Masha, you're like a Cho, you're uh maybe you're Ah la, yeah la, the marksman la. So you don't, you don't, you don't generally do well in team fights. So you do split push a lot more la. Then you will do split push. You will pressure the opponents to come back. Like the point is to pressure the opponent to come back. That's why you do split push. Cause you split push already. If they don't come back, their towers down. If they come back, then you can go back and and fight the fight the fights la. Like maybe they two three people wah la, they you like at their base tell their tell their door already. Then they like wow this guy cannot la. If we need two people, if not we cannot cannot uh hold him la. So basically, you get two people back, then uh, you you TP back and go for the five v three fight. This kind of things lah, speed push lah. Then for roaming, for pick offs, for team fights, and for vision, this one um for this for this roaming ah, uh, it is more for those team fight heroes lah, like those level four power spike heroes like Badang, Xbox, and Liu Mo. This kind of heroes lah. So basically, what you do is um. After you basically just catch your waves all the way until you are level four before you roam, because there's nothing you can do at level two, level three. You don't have your ulti. So, so for this all this level four power spike, you you just catch your wave until level four. Get some vision on your opponent, like let them know where they are. Maybe go go pop 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 their the support a bit and come back. If you if you can clear the wave fast lah, like you can do this kind of thing to to go and pressure your opponent lah. Like just show him like he or a. Hey, Eh, wow, the, the badang at mid eh. eh we, we better back off. So maybe they cannot catch the wave properly. Yeah. Then after it, once your once your creeps are coming back, then you just go back. Something like that lah. Then after your level four, you can maybe communicate with team. Eh, where where do we want to like do the first fight? Like maybe the you are you are at the third side, or maybe the bottom is at the third side. Then you have a marksman like at bottom as a side lane. So he don't he generally don't do well in the in the early team fight because he's weak he cannot scale yet. So you will try to like come to your team like you go and swap lane with him and then or maybe you you clear away already you TP down and then you just come to your team like hey let's fight this turtle lah we are level four already like are you gonna punch like four people then we kill them all lah something like that lah. So for all these team fight heroes ah you really need the really need the comms like really need the team to tell you ah like. Hey, they ready already. They got ulti. They can catch this one person off. Then they will like force a fight. Then you can go join. Because ah, uh, if for for Badang, Liu, all these kind of heroes ah, uh, if you don't have comms ah, uh, and then you just roam down from from top to mid lah. Let's say lah, top to mid lah. Because everybody usually converge to mid for the fight ma. So you roam down from top to mid ah, uh, and then the fight ah uh, don't happen at all. Then you basically waste waste all your time and effort try to come down. Cause uh sometimes ah. Uh, you don't know when the fight is gonna happen, right? so if you level four already, ah, uh, like sometimes lah, sometimes lah, you like Gan Chong, eh, like come down, eh, level four already, guys. I abandon my wave already. We can fight now, but the fight don't, that like, it's not happening lah. Uh, Cause you maybe your team, you a team Atlas, level three, you cannot force the fight. This kind of things lah. Uh, so you have to really take note lah. Uh, like the timing to come down for fights is very important. So roaming for vision, like like I say just now uh, um, when you when you clear a lane really, you have nothing much to do, and you are not a very strong uh you're not a very strong strong hero to take jungle. 
maybe you are like I uh, um was a very weak hero to take jungle uh. let me see uh. Uh, maybe you are like a gato lah uh. okay you are like a gato then you like wow lao uh. actually the jungle hit five years also cannot kill then my sir you go you clear a lane already then you go take some grass for some vision like maybe you can go can go near to their 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 red buff area then you can see like wow actually hey, they all three people doing buff eh. then maybe they are they are blue open so so now your team know they are blue open then maybe they can path towards there and try and take the blue so you can maybe like get some pressure at their red like like bait them a bit like you know like do stupid thing like you go go in fight three people then you flicker out those kind then buy your buy your team sometime uh. this kind lah uh. then okay anticipate on gang so this is the thing this is the one thing that we we really rely on our team also because depending on which side of the map you are let's say you're top uh, and then your opponents are like okay you have totally no vision at them on them uh. your team uh, will allow it like like stupid one, all the one top one. Then, then you don't know where they start, right? You don't know where they start their buffing. Like maybe they start blue, then they start red. As in, you they go blue, then they go. They will automatically buff to red, ma. Like you will want to have your double buff as a hyper before you go and do anything, ma. So, these small small things like this are uh, like where they start uh, will affect where they are buffing and where they are gonna gang. So how do you anticipate on gang? So your team needs to let you know, like. Like, hey, this, uh, this, their team hyper are uh, starting blue. So they might buff to red and come to your lane. So this one, you already know, like, you already anticipate, like, they will come your lane. So this one, you all need to really take note. Like, you anticipate they are going to come your lane, right? So you can, you can, like, roughly judge the timing also. Because your, because your team, your team hyper will also do the blue, then do the red, right? So based on your team speed, uh, you can, you can roughly gauge like when they are gonna reach your top lane. So that's one of the things that can help you out and in and disciplining gangs uh, gangs uh. Okay, so I think we don't have time to answer Last slide already la. After last slide is Q and A already. So after we can Okay okay. We can answer during Q and A. Okay, okay, then let's go to the next slide. La. Let's move on. So when to when to join the fight like i mentioned earlier la, so whenever you want to join the fight right you always want to clear ways before going this is to ensure your towers don't get pushed or is to ensure you don't lose the extra goal exp la. like there's no point like if you keep going to the fight and then you don't get anything then you'll just waste time la. so you'll try to get your ways before you go in case the fight doesn't happen yeah or in case maybe they got a masha what well, then you leave the wave there you leave the truck there then you let the Masha hit the tower. You all know Masha down tower very very fast one. So even with without the without the three minutes uh, it can also down the tower with a truck. Yeah la. So that one you all also need to take note. So usually there's no ending of the one VR matchup or when your opponent just standing very behind to clear wave and hide tower. Um this is partly true because yes, there's really no end to the 1v1 matchup la. like you're always 1v1 there then you like you all clear wave then you all poke each other poke each other a bit then you all clear wave poke each other a bit then maybe go join the fight together like buddies then then you go back to your lane and then 1v1 again so there's really no ending la. so what you all can do is maybe take advantage of where your uh where your opponent's position are la. like basically your team can communicate to you like hey they are hyper they are tank all that uh, at bottom lane maybe you can be aggressive at the top lane and then try to cut their lane and then go down for the go down for the roam uh. so because you know like their team all not not around top uh, so you can be more aggressive you can go cut a lane do do more things uh. like you force the force the person to stay in stay in the stay in the lane like you roam before them uh. so you can all you you always have vision on him then you roam down already by the time you roam down first ah, uh, by the time maybe maybe the fight is at the bottom. Then you roam all the way down ah. Uh, maybe by the time you all fight finish ah, uh, the person walk until mid only. Yeah, something like that lah. Uh. So when your mid is losing or getting a even trade, you going over to join the fight can change the entire team's fight team fight odds and stop from there. Uh, this one is uh half true lah. Uh. I I would say half true lah. Uh. Depending on your hero also lah, uh, because if you, you say you are. Uh, if your team uh, draft two maybe very very weak 
lane fighters are. Like maybe you are Masha. Masha and maybe uh, uh anything uh. Liu Mo. Cho Liu Mo. No lah, no lah. Cannot say Liu Mo. Liu Mo quite quite strong in team fight. So maybe uh maybe a Gunivir lah. Okay, Gunivir. Okay. So when your mid is losing, so now my mid losing, then I top. I actually owning the person who are damn bad on I couldn't even uh, jump him one time, I kill him one time already. But because my mate is losing, uh, then they're screaming for help. Uh, I need to I need to be forced to come down to help them. Then I come down already, uh, my lane will automatically get pushed. Because because for all these lane fighters, uh, their playing skills is not very strong. Uh. Like let's say I'm a Gunivir, I'm fighting against a uh, uh maybe uh a Cho a Cho or whatever la. Basically wild heroes la. Like I clear very slowly, so I clear very slowly, uh, cause I only have one skill to clear only, uh, like the first, the the what Adugan, uh, they, I just uh, throw 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 already, and then I clear away free, then I finally come down for the fight, uh, and then uh, my team, like, okay, my team so depend on me that I uh, this jump, uh, have to jump five people, uh, then I can like, I can like go over and change the team fight odds, uh, and snowball, then. How to say uh, like if I just miss one jump uh, then become we we lose two lanes, you know. Like my lane uh, I'm doing well, then I come mid and then I miss a jump. And then I mean that's on me lah, that's on me lah. But but if I go ahead and miss one jump uh, that means I lose my top lane as well already. Cause I, I lose the lose the power to scale over him. Already. So to me uh, sometimes um sometimes that can be a that, that can be a trade lah. Like I can continue to do well against my lane and then maybe get maybe okay if my mid is not doing well then you can come to your team like say try not to fight so much in the mid lah cause you know you're behind ma. you're not, not doing well against them your, your mid fight keep losing so maybe you can ask your team to like split up like maybe get the MM to come come to my lane to farm a bit or maybe maybe go to the other lane to farm or farm in the jungle lah then maybe get one more person to come with me to force the force the top pressure something like that lah like, I don't feel like if my mid is losing, right, and like every time my mid lose, ah, uh, mid side must go over. I don't, I don't feel it's this way, lah. Unless I'm really, uh, like, like a team, team fighter, like a uh, export or uh, Tamus, you know, maybe not say Tamus, lah. Uh, a little more, uh, maybe a Badang, uh. Then I would say like this one really I can make a difference. But unless I'm those those heroes, lah. Unless I'm those heroes only. If not, I think there's an option to continue scaling against your lane fighter because now the now uh, this uh this meta really rely on the side lane fighters a lot. Like the hyper carry is just a uh, just sort of like a page, you know. Actually, it's the two side lane uh, controlling the game. Like if your two side lanes do damn well uh, and only the mid losing uh, you still can bring back the game one. Uh. Yeah. So. Okay, next. Losing the lane and team is not helping you, gang, can also just join the fight. Technically, almost everyone that notice trip wave pushing the wave will help you clear. Uh, okay, for this one, uh, losing the lane and the team is not helping you, gang. Uh. This is something that I complain a lot. Uh. Like, <laughs> well, I lose the lane already. Y'all one person come and help me. Maybe we can, like... This guy burn flicker, burn everything already. Wow, your one person come, I can kill him already. Then my lane settle sweet sweet already. But no, maybe your team admit like also doing like shit lah. Like they, they, their mid matchup is not good. Then probably they are unable to clear the waves as fast, and they keep losing vision at mid. So these are some of the reasons that they might not be able to help you gang lah. Like basically you have a weaker mid trail lah. Then. In this scenario, uh, you can just stay at your lane and try to farm it up a bit and then maybe look for like like go for very small pickoffs la. like just like you can talk to your team like hey since you're not doing doing very well uh, at the mid fight uh, then you're just uh, okay you're clearing slow than them right then you all don't know where they roam to right then you all just camp in some bush like like you know like my top my try bush la, you all just camp there like maybe you know okay they take blue then they take red then you know their reset timing right like around three minutes then they'll reset the bus ma. so it'll be the same the same position 
it'll be blue and red. So you'll be anticipating the gang again. So if they take your red already, most likely they will path back to top. So you can anticipate this 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 gang uh, like because people are always hungry for towers, man. Wow, three minutes really, hey, we need to go down this tower, then we put put pressure, then we go meet down the tower, whatever. Then you can anticipate the gang. You can ask your teammates, cause your teammates to like maybe get two people stay in the top bush with you. Then maybe see if there's any openings lah. You can you can get any counter gangs of them. Then just let your let your maybe your scaling hero, your hyper, maybe it's a carry cloud or whatever. Just let him slowly farm and farm the game, farm the game lah. Yeah. Um, for the joint fight. To be honest, ah, uh, as a losing f- losing lane fighter, uh, I really wouldn't want to join the fight, lah. Uh. But also depend on what hero I am, lah. Uh, okay, depends on what hero I am. Like again, lah, uh, if I'm a Badang and I'm a Liu Mo and a Xbox, ah, uh, I will. There's no point for me to stay in the lane, uh. Like lose or win, ah, uh, I'm better off at the team fight. So no matter what, I will go to the team fight. Like even if I lose the lane, I have to abandon the lane. I would rather like abandon my lane and join the team fight uh, and try to force a force a force a good fight lah, basically. But again, like those like very weak laners are uh, maybe like very weak team fighters. Sorry, like jaw head, cho, all this kind of. I really won't suggest like going. Going into the fight lah, like okay, I mean also depends on their heroes lah. But as a losing lane fighter lah, your your the your position is compromised already. Like they already know they own you in the lane, then you're gonna be in a tower vision for some time. You're gonna be there slowly clearing your creeps, and then people will know when you roam. So this is very disadvantageous for a losing lane fighter. Like to me, I will just try and clear the lane. Continue clearing the lane, and then yeah, same thing. I'll just come to my team, like ask them to come and help me. Like maybe one person to help me, uh, help me camp or something lah. I don't really, I don't really, uh, maybe maybe it's for me personally only lah. Like I don't feel like, uh, if I lose the lane, wow, then I must just straight away like I must join the fight. Like, I don't feel that way lah because the reason being ah uh, is. If I'm the one losing the lane, ah, uh, means my opponent, ah, uh, is they are clearing ways faster than me. Means they are always like five v four, five v five v four lah, like that lah. Uh. So if I if I if I clear the lane slower uh, and I go to the fight slower, uh, they I'm just most of the time wasting my time lah. Uh, Cause they can start the start the fight earlier. The fight might be might end already. Then I also cannot uh, I also cannot I also cannot do anything lah. Uh. But if I abandon my lane, ah, uh, if I, I abandon all the creeps, ah, uh, and then I go there, and then again I die, then I losing double, eh. I lose all the wave, I I get killed at mid, and then I uh, maybe maybe by the respawn timer I lose another wave, then that that's damn stupid, lah. I feel so. I think you should just continue to continue to clear the waves, and then yeah, just just comes to a team, lah. Like ask them, ask one of them to help, lah. Like. That, that that's my that's my opinion lah. But you guys can have like your own own mindset or own way to think lah if you want. Okay. okay Should next. be it for this, right? Okay. Uh this one this video I we just watch but don't talk about it. Cause uh it's a mage side lane and just keep observing how this Lunox move ah. This Lunox is a side lane Lunox ah, so basically. Then he's fighting a uh, Tamus, which is a monster. But in the first place, he started off as mid, then transit to side lane. <clears throat> so this is one of the example why that he abandoned his lane and actually he actually cannot go back. Tamus level two is really monster. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. Then what? Then so he's like. He just abandoned all his script wave at bottom and from there they actually not doing very well. So let me skip to Okay, I actually don't need to see it. Really. So at this point right you see uh he's just clearing mid uh clearing bottom and then go mid. Clearing bottom and then go mid. 
So that's the repeat cycle of this uh, uh, Lunox. If you look at the mini map, uh, don't see don't see the screen. See the mini map. So he was a bot. He just come mid, poke people a bit, take the mini XP. Uh, the, he only goes back right when the Lunox, uh, the opponent creep wave, uh, touches the tower. That that's then he will go back. Or when there is someone that is helping him, or like what Sana said just now, like, hey, come gang my lane, eh? things like that. Then he will be slightly aggressive. Otherwise, if you look at Lonox, right, he is always he will lose to Tangus like in a way, especially he lost that crit wave, so he can't do much uh, until now. So yeah, so in order to win the abandoned lane is to either you bring someone come, or you. Uh, go leech the mid EXP then come or you just receive tower but there's a lot of disadvantages uh, when you lose the lane so it's a gamble uh, losing the lane okay I I don't really I don't think that's a very very good example for you all uh, cause these uh, mid side lanes uh, really need a very like really the game plan on uh, you you probably won't have so much time to like like roam or anything like if you're against a like if you start lane you're, you're maybe maybe you're not like him like you start lane as a Lunox uh, against a Tamus. I tell you this Tamus uh, will never let you uh, go anywhere man. if he's good lah uh, he'll never let you go anywhere man, cause he know you're so weak at before level 4 and just now y'all can see that y'all can watch the video right uh that's that that's one of the reason why uh, I say that Tamus is a level 2 power spec you see how much damage uh, he can do to those those two those two supports uh, at level two. Uh. He almost killed them eh, but he had to flicker away la. Yeah. But if it's Sana, Sana won't flicker la. Next, next. Yeah, I was I was stand there and then <laughs> and then throw them the first blood already. Okay, so when to abandon the lane? Uh this when to abandon the lane uh, is very, very situational. Meaning to say, okay, let's say you are at top lane. Then, um, let me see. Uh. Okay, you're at top lane. And then you you have comps from your team. Like, you have a losing mid lane. And then you know, like, your, your team say, wow, hey, this, this one, uh, we clear so much lower than them. Uh, they're going to take the crap and invade us, really. So, once you hear this, uh, you must be ready to abandon your lane and come to the fight already. Like, let's say you are Tamus at top lane. Like, you... Once you... Your power spike level 2 already, right? Once you level 2 already, right? And then if they come in the middle of your... If they come in the middle of your second wave, uh, you have to just abandon and go down for a fight. Right? Don't think of clearing the wave already. Because because uh, the, the fights uh, will happen so fast uh, at level 1, level 2 because the HP very low, ma. So the fight will be over very fast. Like unless unless you're able to keep dragging out the blue and then they keep cannot take it, then maybe the fight will be dragged for a very long time. Lah. But you should always go down if you should always go down and fight the team fight if you can lah. Cause your blue is one of the most important buff early game lah. Like even for like assassins, your whatever heroes lah. I I won't say you you will die without this blue lah, but it's it's very good to very good to save it lah. Like you won't lose level, you won't lose exp because you know if your if your hyper ah uh, wow level one and they try to get your blue, then wow then keep gonna reset you still level one, your mass will be affected, your exp your goal will be expect will be affected. So if you are level two tamus ah, uh, you already power spike the uh, you should just abandon your lane come to the fight and get something out of it lah, I guess then uh, the other situation is where you you are fight you okay you're in it you're, you're in your lane then while well, you see like your team tell you hey bro we're going bottom already they all going top all going top then you you know uh, that if they all come top uh, even before 3 minutes uh, they can down your tower. And them downing your tower early game uh, is not very favor favor favorable for you and your team because you will lose vision on top. So what you will try to do uh, is 
okay, this, this one maybe not abandoned lah, okay. This one is the only situation where you abandon lah is when you are a very, very weak laner. Like you're a cho, you cannot go and force the, clear, the wave clear. You are a Gunivia, you cannot force the wave clear. You jump five people down there, uh, your the truck never die, uh, means you tow already. So this one is only, this one is very situational. It's only for certain heroes. Like your Tamus, you can jump in uh, and try and force the, force the wave clear, uh, then you go and jump in. If not, uh, you really just have to abandon that lane uh, and then go somewhere else. Because no matter what you do, uh, you cannot clear the wave. So might as well, they go bottom area, you go mid, take the EXP. And then when they leave top, uh, you can go back to top. So as much as you want to try and save a tower, uh, keeping yourself alive in the early game uh, is a lot better for you because of the mask. Because if you die, uh, you die there uh, at level 2, uh, your mask all affected again. Then you come back to lane, maybe wow, they see wow, this guy level 2, wow, we gank him better, uh, we wait for him to come back. Then later you die again. Then you tore your, your mask all stuck. Then become you have to buy mask. Then you buy mask already, wow, then your team like losing game, wow, everybody can't farm your lane. Then you level 2 all the way, oh. then you just lose the game. Ah. Yeah, so this this is very situational. Ah. Ignore the Tao CH, yeah, okay. This one, ah, ignore the Tao CH, ah, is actually what I do very, very often. Like, my, like, I thought, like, I'm, a, I'm a player ah, that really likes to team fight. So no matter what uh, the situation uh, I will always like I, like I know I uh, level four already. Right? I know I power spike already. Maybe I'm a little more lah. Like, level four already. Uh, I see the wave uh, like kiss already. Uh, I just like okay, bro. I level four already. I can't even meet now. Like I should already go meet on eh. Like I will just ignore everything at before three minutes because I know that they cannot down my tower before three minutes because there's the tower shield lah. So no matter what uh, I will keep. I will just abandon and go straight away. Like, because, again, la, like, you don't know when the fight is gonna happen, ma. So, sometimes it's better to be there earlier than than later, la, like, after you clear wave. La. So, I will always try to be there a bit earlier. La. But, yeah, la, so that's that's where I sometimes, uh, I lose out against, like, like teams like RQ, la, which they just die, die, wah, chill game, farm at the side, farm at the side, then later, get one item, then they review, like that. Like, because my, te my team is more team fight based, ma. so we will keep trying to look for fights. But if the fights don't happen, uh, we actually lose a lot. So these are things you you can take note. La. Like, if you really want to ignore the Tao Siege, uh, like, you want to ignore the wave, abandon the wave at, like, before 3 minutes, uh, you, can, you can do it. But make sure you have the comms to the team, like, say you're coming and they really need to force the fight now. If not, you really lose one wave and you lose your time. La. So, do a sneaky cut wave and delay their time if they foresee, foresee gang on you. Okay, this one, uh, um, like, okay, again, your team going bottom. Then, you know, uh, the whole team uh, coming up top already. Wow, they're gonna cut your, cut your tri bush near your tower. Uh, the, you know, the, the lot pit uh, beside go on the, the tri bush. Uh, yeah, where, you, where, you, where, you, where the opponent will cut your wave. Uh. So, you know that they have a lot of people. You know they are gonna, they are gonna come. Like you should die one, but you die die. You want to save, you want to try and save this tower la. So you will try and like go, go cut their wave instead. Like usually people don't do that. We're like wow, four people come really. Hey, we I need you to already la. But this one is like the like the reverse la. You basically go all in uh, and you try and go and cut the wave uh, and delay their time, like. Because they cannot down the down the tower without the wave ma. So if you can go out there uh, and get the get the waves uh, before they reach you uh, then it's a win-win for you. Because if you try and get them I mean you should try and get the wave if they are in the tower, uh, it might be too late. Lah. Yeah. 90 to 95% die. Uh, or 100, 100. Or 100, lah, 100, lah, 100 I think 100. 100. Lah. Not 90 to 95%. Lah. I don't think you can survive a four man. Maybe la, a bit la, la. a bit chance. You think they stupid? Maybe la. Mm. Uh, okay, let's go, let's go. Last let's slide, go. last slide. Okay. When should I when should I use the different type of fighter and overall what are my primary role as a different types of fighter? Again, like like I say my concept is one high sustain and one uh one 
team fighter, lane fighter, whatever lah. Like basically, there must be one sustain. At least. At least lah. At least one sustain. Mm. Uh, and overall, I'm at very low as the different person. Again, I think the primary roles are explained explain by itself already. La. So the tank fighter, you are basically sustaining, you are basically trying not to die in the early, early mid game to their gangs. And then the team fight, you are just fighting at boss fight levels. Like you are level 4, you go roam down for the fight, roam down for the fight. That's why there must always be a, a balance. La. The, the, the sustained fighter will be the one clearing the side, side lane waves. La. While you you as a team fight fighter will go to the fights more. So then there's a speed push fighter. This is the, this is one of the situation where your sustained fighters can go into a fight instead of you lah. Like cause you're weaker in the fights ma. Yeah, so lane fighter, usually very strong at lanes such as Jaw Hit and Graver. Yeah, this this is very true lah. Like they they don't do very well in team fights. Gulliver is uh, subjective also lah. It really depends on your hero comp. Like like I really like use Gunnivel like. like uh now because of the meta the tanks are always the same few uh Alice, Kufra these heroes are uh, work very well with Gunnivel because they have knockups that's why I really like to use Gunnivel because um they will have verify ma so okay if they have verify I can still like after Alice ulti I can still jump them but if they don't have verify uh, then this Alice go in and five man ulti uh, then I go in one ulti uh, they all gone already so. This uh Gunniver is very subjective also. But draw hit, uh, you run to five heroes, you sure die. Uh. You sure die on. Uh. So this one you need to need to like play more carefully. Uh. Like you need to be more sneaky. You need to camp bush, you need to like find find some opening to get to their core. Okay, like, basically yeah. this one I take over. Lane fighter, okay. camp bush, snipe people. Tank fighter, delay time, alert people, take farm, cut lane, do whatever you want, but fight. Team fighter fighters, you will lose lane, but fight the team fight. Good enough, right? While the split push fighter, there is an option for you to split push, even if you don't want to catch people. Easy. Okay. Okay, let's end let's it. Summarize it yeah. yeah, so we shall go move on from the fighter role. So I only got one question I want to answer to is do I buy room mask at side lane? Now don't buy room mask at side lane. Why? Because the room mask don't even give you go now. If you pry, you you go you buy ah, uh, you watch replay right, you go and see the net worth, it will never trigger, no matter how. Yeah, it will always be the tank triggering only. Okay? So I hope that answers your question. Then we shall go to the summary. So for summary one, different roles have sub roles which has different objective and pros to it. Play with its pros, understands its weakness capabilities, and accept it. Second, understand your role strength and weakness can allow you to make a swift decision to the next step. So even though you understand, but you need to know how to play with it. So my next summary is very simple. You need to observe, you need to practice, you need to understand, you need to read, and also lastly, you need to experiment. So therefore, even though you understood your role doesn't mean you do not need to train anymore. Ah. You also need to train the mechanics of a hero, the macro, the micro. Okay? So Opio, remember Opio ah? Okay, so we shall move on to the Q&A Okay guys, now it's the giveaway ready So please give out the winner of the giveaway, Sana. Okay, the giveaway winners will be Jorin Tan J O R E E N Jorin, Darian Yo, Root Gaming R U T Root Gaming, Clanston Co, and Mabel. Oh, oh now Mabel get again ah. Oh, did I'm I recently say getting a lot of skins yes, eh? Jason just now. Oops. Okay. Anyway, guys, uh, Skip will contact you for your ML details, and congratulations to all the winners out there. And for those that did not win, don't worry, next next week there will be another giveaway, okay? So thank you everyone. So let me read one Q one Q and A. One Q and A now. Before we end the entire thing, okay? One Q and A guys. Okay, wait, let me see ya. Uh. What do you think about Faramis offlane? Go, Sana. Faramis offlane, uh, um I I don't think it's I don't think it's very very good lah. 
because the early game really really quite weak lah. Early game really quite weak against okay unless you are fighting against very weak laners lah. If not, the Faramis basically lose to almost everybody. So I don't think it's get good lah. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay, so I guess that is all. But before that, guys, please help to please help to do the survey. HTTPS uh semicolon slash slash bit dot ly slash exp survey four. Okay, so oh, I mean well please paid. copy paste for it. <laughs> please copy paste for inside. Let them do the survey and please help us do the survey. Thank you so much. Okay, so I hope we hope that you all learn something from it. So thank you so much for watching, guys. So stay tuned for the next episode on the twelfth of August where we will cover more on. I don't know. I don't know. Please, so please come to the Facebook page of Resurgence or Escape Esports. Ah, so my assistant coach for the episode will also be wait for official news, but most likely will be Sana lah. Huh? Oh. So those for mm. who have signed up for the mentoring session. Please head over to the Discord now. We'll begin in roughly five to ten minutes. So, uh, you join the EXP Plus me- uh, mentoring voice channel and also leave your questions in the question text channel. Okay. So those of you who haven't joined the Skip ML Discord, please check your email for instructions or use the link below. So if you guys are interested, you guys can find more details soon when we announce the details for the next mentoring sessions. So after the workshop on the twenty four, right? Remember to sign up ASAP ah, because there are limited slots and there are always there is always prizes to be given away during the Q and A. So you see now five people got elite skin. Later we'll have free diamonds for you all. Where to find? You get good knowledge, good skin, good diamonds. So once again, uh, uh, is there any uh sing cup next? Uh, the what ah? What EXP plus the sing 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 sing. Okay. Lecture or not? Eh? Well, I don't know. Eh. Anyway, that one. No, 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 no. Don't, don't have. Don't have. Is. I think don't no, have. Don't have. Yes. Ah. Mm. Okay. Don't have. Ah. So you all only can see me on twelfth of August. No more already. No more the the who already Alex. So you all have to miss me more. Okay. So once again, this is EXP Plus workshop presented by Skip. Thanks to all of you for watching, and we'll see you all on twelfth of August. Thanks, 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 guys. We will see you soon. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah.